This is Community Formation, a podcast made by and for the Twilight Imperium community. What the fuck is up, my dude? What is up, my dude? How Man. are you, bro? Dude, I am bro. I am doing great. Yeah? I can't carry more than 10 pounds. Yeah. And so I don't know how I'm going to carry this episode like yeah. I told me to do. So we're going to have to try this. <laughs> ah, we're going to get right to it. We're gonna, you know. shit. Here we go, dude. <laughs> what a fucking crock of shit no i love it dude i love it got got to got to start it off with a hernia joke for sure yeah dude i mean god it hurt to laugh for so long it just feels good to let it out okay so so that so that part of the whole thing is over you can actually bust a gut laughing and and not be in pain okay that's cool yeah Yeah, that's what that's honestly cool yeah dude no it was was pretty bad and like the worst part is one this isn't the first time this has been said to me two it's like oh it was smaller than i thought it would be (laughs) no so like you know like like when your doctor tells you that he's like (laughs) like, okay which is the first time i heard that but uh, um, oh my god thanks yeah (laughs) yeah thanks doc no no yeah apparently just a bunch of fat was squirting through the hernia hole you know oh jesus it was a very small very small uh, don't make me barf dog oh jesus (laughs) come on you know how many views uh, we'd get if we threw up on on fucking stream though, oh, buddy? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll go full <laughs> South Park with it right now. Yeah, for real, for real. Well, but shit, uh, other than that, man, life's yeah, great. Life's Starting great. to schedule life's my summer, great. get yeah. the concerts on the books. I spent like six hundred bucks on concert tickets. I think. Wow, fucking well, like a bunch, bunch bulk, of cheap dude. shows. Not like yeah. you know, totally, but, uh, totally. That's yeah, lit. Dude, heading to oh, meet an expendable next month. What? Down in Florida, yeah. Oh, that is so yeah, I think you have to drive to come see me. My, we're going to my parents' place in Naples. He lives yeah. not far. So, for sure, yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. Man, that's incredible. Will you give that boy a big hug for me? A big oh, old, you, well, big I will. Hug. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Total, oh, yeah. Real total. big hug. He's not, you know, he's fun to play with, but he's not fun to play with. It's my expendable. <laughs> you know, you just experience it. You just got to experience it. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a unique brand. It's, it it's is. a single barrel whiskey. Unique brand <laughs> is, is what expendable is, but no, yep. I love that boy. Sweet as can be. Sweet as yeah. can be. No, yeah, for dude. sure. But, uh, what about you, my man? I was ranting oh. on for a minute. I'm good, dude. Life is good. Life is chill. The weather has really, really turned around uh, here oh, in yeah. the Pacific Northwest, and there's nothing quite like it. The the summertime, springtime vibes around here are just beautiful, gorgeous. Love, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, I, uh... Loving life, hitting the gym harder than ever, feeling good, chilling. Um, had a lovely, wonderful time at the Hoot Nanny. Like I, oh, I'm, man, I wish we could have made dude, it. I'm not going to go on for too long because I could go on for too long about it. But it was just like the most um, dopest, like unique, like family gathering. Like I think we, no, no, no literally like the interview that we do later with uh, Troll. Like I make this comparison where he's talking mm-hmm. about um the the melbourne tournament and he mm-hmm. said this thing like it was like a family gathering with people that you've never met before but it's yeah. like you feel like they're your family or whatever yeah it was totally like that vibe man you know it was just oh, like hell yeah it was just feeling like i'm feel already so close to these people but like you know maybe some of them i've never seen their faces before you know like had to make yeah. all these introductions of like Hey, like, are you, you, I'm me and we, yeah. you know, like, but we know each other, but we don't yeah. know each other, you know? No, for but sure. Had such a great time, uh, played some TI, you know, not nothing like momentous happened as far as like me playing games there or whatever. I was just honestly mad chilling. I smoked so many joints. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> I... I was like, I was balling out, dude, you know, like in one of the, one of the days I like, uh, I had to work on one of the days. So I kind of took it like a little bit easier and worked in that evening. It worked that evening or whatever. But then that next day, like I just took the day off and I got there in the morning and I was just like, I'm balling out. I'm buying (laughs) drinks for people. I am like (laughs) going to be chain smoking joints like all day long. And I don't know, on re- upon reflection, I'm like wondering if I went like a little too hard and maybe like people were not prepared for like how uh, based on like, a how quantum was going to go. Uh, his synopsis yeah. of me picking up at the airport at 6 a.m. Yeah. on that Monday. He's like, oh, yeah. Brass, he uh, he was drinking Bloody Marys before we were going out disc golfing. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Dude, Quantum is literally the loveliest boy. He is oh, literally, he is. Oh, Quantum is literally is magical. just like the most magical, lovely boy. Oh my god, mm-hmm. he is incredible. Yeah, and I feel bad oh to have god. made him sad, but we'll talk about that in another segment. We oh, have here today. okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, mm-hmm. no, I know, I know what we're talking about. But yeah, no, the mm-hmm. just the whole thing was great. You know, I uh, sat on a log with EJ. That's a metaphorical. Oh, that's a metaphorical log. Uh, I just, um, you know, I already loved these boys so much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Matt, Matt Hunter, EJ, Son. But after mm. this whole experience, I just realized, like, EJ and Son are my favorites. Like, <laughs> they really, like, they really are. They're just, like, they yeah. just feel like they're my fun uncles. And, mm-hmm. like, I was able to spend a lot of time with them and ended up, like, driving them around a lot, which was really fun. Like, playing show yeah. for the boys and, you know, playing, oh, you yeah. know, like, jamming out on my jazz radio. And it was mm-hmm. just, like, Sun, um, EJ, and Quantum, and myself, and just the boys <laughs> rolling. Rolling dirty, <laughs> bro, is what we were doing. Man. Rolling yeah. deep. Oh, we got God. a squad. Honestly, oh, uh, had had such a good time. the The only thing I would say is I wish the weather had been a little bit better. You know, like it did. It, yeah. it was really nice when we were out on the uh, disc golf course, where it was like the sun was coming out, but it was still like kind of cold, really mm-hmm. crisp air and everything. But mm-hmm. there were some other points where it was just like a little cold and miserable and fucking yeah, typical I mean, Portland you know, shit. You know, like uh, yeah, getting Pacific Northwest before like May June. Yeah. Totally. Never do it. Never <laughs> do it. Like, and I'm talking to people like I do a lot of mountain yeah, stuff. Sure. Like that's like one of my hobbies. And people like here, they're like, "Yeah, I'm going to Colorado like June 1st I'm like, uh, "Maybe, yeah, maybe wait maybe a little back bit. that back up. Yeah, maybe, like, I've been yeah. hit with softball sized hail on top of mountain oh, July geez. 4th Like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Like, I just so like I know, I know how it is out that way. I mean, yeah. well, you know. The whole yeah. thing before my thing. I know a lot about the area. So. Sure, 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 yeah. sure, sure, yeah. yeah. For but sure, yeah. man. Well, I'm happy. So that, I'll have to make uh, it out sometime. We guys go we'll have to see at least once a year. It's it's the rules. It's the rules. Is. It's, the, it's rules. the rules. Well, you should come out to the lake, man. That would be tight. That would be that hella would be tight, tight dude. Yeah, that I, would be hella tight. Yeah. We'll look into it. I will look into so, it. I will think, yeah. think it on over for sure, 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 sure. Have a nice but think about it. I will have a nice <laughs> think about it for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, Frox, what do we got on the show today? What's uh, what's going on with the episode? Oh, man, this is a weird one. It's okay. a weird one. Yeah. I, you know, uh, I, I think we have a little bit of a who's the speaker, but not really. It's kind of a weird, I think. It's I might a, say the highlight. The yeah. highlight is the episode itself, quite frankly, because uh, mm-hmm. I talked to Root some time ago about the Nomad, and mm-hmm. uh, we're finally we're finally throwing that bad boy out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's actually part of our Faction Fandom series. Faction and, uh, Stands, rest. Volume Faction Two. Stands. Faction <laughs> Stands. Uh, oh, I, uh, it didn't take much convincing, but I talked to Duke Lukem himself about being a Barony Stan, and he was down, I was down. It was a magical moment that we have captured uh, for you here. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, so we got those two, um, and then we have Murderous Troll on as well. Yep. We're going to stick that before the the meat of the episode. And yeah. uh, he's uh, on the show to plug the Melbourne irl tournament so this man, is love me some aussies oh, oh we love aussies on you. this show if obviously. we were to have a community formation con it would probably have to be in australia why not honestly i, I honestly <laughs> no, like why not <laughs> like i think they're our biggest fans yeah like, i'm not even joking no like, totally no i mean we we talk about it or later in the segment but it's like old yeah. wolf is actually the biggest fan and counts for at least 10 fans like on, oh, for on sure. his own you know like oh for sure yeah. i mean ged's a pretty big fan too oh Totally. Like he asked me to 100%. switch teams in this fog game like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, I realized you're very cool. Can you just take the place of my other teammate? Uh, yeah, yeah. Which is Spoon, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What what but, an absolute uh, crack up. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. So but yeah, no, anything, I mean, it's uh, one episode. Oh, yeah. One other thing. One We're going to talk about some big news in the old community formation. Let's just get right into that, I think. Maybe talk tournament a little bit. Oh, talk yeah, about the no, tournament? 100%. Yeah. It's time for Articles yeah. of War, the SC- SCPT tournament update. You know, got to let you know what's going on with the tournament. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's been a little while since the last episode, so we have advanced. I mean, I can't even remember exactly. We were in the prelims. We were JJ in the one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, for sure. Mm-hmm. For, oh, okay, mm-hmm. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, yeah, we 
are still yeah we're in the prelims and mm-hmm. just just tell him frox just tell him what right. happened. i won just, i won. won my prelim game he not won. only did i win yeah. i beat kaluin yeah. i beat milty yeah. i beat quantum yeah. octopus i beat corf and i beat the pillage gate master himself king nuggets oh my goodness i didn't even yeah. realize the pillage gate guy was in it <laughs> yeah, he was titans he was on my right <laughs> oh and it was goodness. um it was a it was a game for sure. It was a game. I, I won as a con. Yeah. Folks, and, uh, give him a standing O, everyone. I want you yeah. on your feet. Yeah. Here we I go. I made it to the semis. Yeah. Ya boy. Ya boy. T- ya boy. Wow. Yeah, I told my girlfriend, how's it feel to date like an absolute nerd who's been <laughs> top 50 in two different things in their life? A board game and powerlifting. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, what a nerd, honestly. Yeah. Because all nerds really. power lift, right? Yeah, I think right? so. I mean, me and all wise make up at least half the oh, for half sure. the nerd population. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, tell yeah. tell us more about the game. Like, how did it roll out? You know, like, well, what was the whole story? So, like, I was a con uh, to my left was, and I was sixth pick going in round one, and uh, three on the edge, and. Uh, and three on the edge or make history, which is, you know, two, two anomalies or wrecks or legendary planets came out and, uh, no, not, there was no way everyone could score unless someone found malice and no one did. So I volunteered, I volunteered not to score as long as they let me get custodians. It, it worked. I, I whined whining meta. It's a real thing. Look yep. it up. Yep. Um, and then just the pace of the game happened. I was the only person getting extorted. I was the only person getting any heat. I got pillaged 22 times. No one else more than three. Yeah. yeah. Um, so was this because... I never unlocked my commander. Oh. I was a con. Never, never unlocked, unlocked my the commander. commander. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. Um, never had what, Was this just because you had, like, custodians and then, like, people were using that? No, Milty and Kaluin are really fucking good at the game. Yeah. Not to discredit Quantum. I just never interacted yeah, with totally. Quantum or... Or Corf, I mean not Corf or King Nuggets really, even though he's to my right. Yeah. Um, Mintak just parked next to me, never really made a bunch of neighbors, just mm-hmm. pillaged the shit out of me, and then yep. everyone, then Quanta, uh, Kaluman and Milty just take advantage of how nice I am. Yep. On them. <laughs> 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 it was to quote Wecker, it was a really yeah. weird game because like the beginning, everyone was super mean, but I think my like overwhelming niceness and enthusiasm wore people down because people got nicer as the game went on. Wow. Um. Yeah, and uh, it basically came down to round five. Um, I had QDN, I QDN three times. I got leadership with it twice, and then I uh, used it to get Imperial in the last round. And I got like point blocked and stopped four different times. And finally, um, I, essentially, Kloon wind made me. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. There were, we had we had declared Rider to die in round three. Like, and to him, that means I'm still going to try to win. It, and I still may hurt you, but sure. if I don't win. You're going to win. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I, we gambited early and I ended up buying and moving relics. He gave me enough stalls to last the leadership stall after mm-hmm. I got cooed. I could have won first action round eight, but mm-hmm. on the eight, but yeah. And I uh, ended up taking Rex, beating Milty and him. He was in the air. He gave me a support back and then uh, beat the ground for Milty there and, and won. Wow. With a Rex point and a flagship point. Incredible. So, Incredible. Yeah. Going on to the, going to the semis. Now, I legitimately thought i'd get absolutely ranched that game for sure for um, sure yeah going into it yeah wow so now i gotta schedule another game of ti yeah. this year. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal no big deal well you know yeah. take our take our good well wishes with you uh into yeah. the semis you know represent yeah. uh us and our whole i'm gonna be insufferable if i make the finals and, uh, absolutely yeah. insufferable <laughs> like not even I'm, a question i'm gonna actively <laughs> sabotage you from outside <laughs> like this boy should not be in the finals actually i'm going to, I'm going to fucking put the kibosh on this right now <laughs> yeah dude no yeah. please someone <laughs> take my home system <laughs> in the semis i'll be in yeah. My head barely fits in no, this fucking headset no, right now. But I was I was gonna say I was gonna say that yeah. um I think it's <laughs> such a funny like development with the story because like the pregame was all about you like freaking out about, oh, yeah. about Kaluin specifically and it's like oh yeah Kaluin's such a monster he's gonna destroy me oh my he god he the shit out of me in every no, game we play no, exactly exactly and then <laughs> you guys d- d- 
declare this ride or die partnership. It's just like a beautiful, yeah. it's a beautiful story. Yeah. And I think there's like, yeah. I don't know, there's something like Mickey. the first win in a year too. Oh, there you go. That's my boy. Yeah. That's my boy. Yeah. Um, but there's something mechanical about it going on too, where it's like, he was playing you sorrow, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you're partnering up as like the, uh, the people that can trade the action cards and like he, you've got so much to offer him. He's got so much to offer you in that way. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I could just see it all, all going, yeah. uh, all going out and all beautifully working, you know? Yep. Wow. Yeah. I'm right. very happy with how it went. Uh, we'll say I, I love Hakan now. I love their mechs. Word. I think they're the funnest mechs in the game. Word. Yeah. In the game because of the mechs. Interesting. Literally, Milty was like, I'm going to point block you. And then I was like, well, I'm trading these planets anyway. So I traded the planets and then reinforced the stuff that Milty was trying to point block. Yeah. 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 No, yep. totally, totally. Yeah, then, no, um, I love those mechs, man. No, I yeah, dude, right I love the you. mechs, and yeah. um, I love like I used only one of the like all of the action cards I had that whole game. Mm -hmm. Used them once. Yeah, like I used one. Yeah, I bought some at the end of the game off of uh, Yasarla's stalls, but mm -hmm. regardless, mm -hmm. like of cards I drew, I handed them out as part of deals. It was yeah, Whew. No. yeah. It was all oh a con Mintech game less than eight hours. I am incredibly proud of that. <laughs> Inc incredibly proud. Yeah, Elspeth, you called me out because I called a 16-hour game on my own? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Joke's on you. Joke's on them. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, no that's yep. uh, that's impressive, honestly, and you should get uh, yeah. an achievement for it. A, yeah. a Chivo, as the kids say. <laughs> you, should get a, you should get a Chivo, as the youth uh, like to say. Wow. But yeah, there are, uh, as far as the rest of the prelims, uh, there are four people in the Beautiful People Club, which mm -hmm. is our Discord. Come join. We can yeah. expand this list. They're in the out. semis yeah. that I'm aware of. If I'm missing mm -hmm. one of you all, I'm sorry. But JJ, it's uh, myself. Yeah. J JJ. Cody. Mm -hmm. Alice. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, uh, and you're asked everyone else has made it. Uh, there's a hell of a list. I think I literally know the name of everyone who's in the semis so far. So, mm -hmm. it's going to, you know, this is where it really begins. Um, yeah totally six this is, more games to play left yeah, mantis this is hasn't played yet up. oh yeah obviously we're rooting for mantis and we always oh, yeah. root for mantis and we always mm -hmm. wonder how does this help mantis win yeah we always one of the first fans really of the show wonder. too totally it, so yeah wow huge huge mantis fan over here but uh, I think uh, not much else to talk about on the tournament front. What about you, buddy? Uh, not much to say. I mean, I streamed a game, and it was, uh, you know, it's it's so it's just a bummer. It's like it's so difficult to make this stuff work with my schedule these days. Yeah. So it's like I would love to stream more, you know. But like I've just got, yeah, and it happened. Uh, yeah, I'd like to stream more. But like I, uh, totally. so my social life is not to put it this way. It's just really taken off. And then when he yeah. streamed his game, I was recovering from surgery, and I slept totally. like twelve straight hours for sure. It was for sure. Yeah. And I've got my own thing with like, oh, I work this much and work all at these weird hours. And then on my days off, it's like, I, you know, it's, I'm not recovering from surgery or anything, but I need to yeah. sleep. Like I slept. Well, like I mean, you're working nights, man. Hours, dude. Essentially. No, yeah, like, no, I yeah. am. No, for real, for real. Yeah. So it just throws yeah. like my whole like rhythm out of whack, you know, and it makes yeah. it really hard to be available at these like typical times that people are streaming. Mm -hmm. But you know, if yeah, I, I mean, can, it, you and know. I have opposite schedules, so it's just yeah. every you you get not the normal nine to five like most of you all do, I'm sure. So Word. yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It's like if I can stream another game, that'd be tight. But also, I'm not holding my breath or anything necessarily. You yep. know, like it'll work yep. out if it works out. But, uh, and but you want to yeah. slide in our DMs? We're real good at getting back with people. Yeah. Real good at it. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah. Well, I think we should move move it right along. Is what I'm thinking. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. I think we're just uh, Megan memeing it up at this point, aren't we? Oh, no. We got to talk about a community game. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Got to talk yeah. about community game here. Can't we... talk about it too much, though, because of rule one. No, exactly. And you know what? Honestly, the, I made a meme about it, and I feel like it was one of those memes that nobody, like, hit up with the uh, react, which is, like, you know, like, not a big deal, obviously. But I thought it was a really good meme. And it's, like, mm -hmm. hit me with – at least give me the trade good. You know what I mean? Like you don't have yeah. to get all creative and find like whatever emoji is like yeah. the right emoji. Just hit me with the simple trade good and that would make me feel uh, trade so good. So for good sure. about it. But trade I did the good one. Make me feel good. Yeah. So so say. I did the one that it's like Tyler Durden from Fight Club. Yeah. And the and the caption is the first rule of Fog Club is you don't <laughs> talk about Fog Club. 
yeah right now yeah so it's uh yeah. so the community game eight has started it is in progress i think it's like solidly in the mid game like probably barreling straight toward the late game at we're, this point we're in the I last like. round before the end game yeah essentially essentially yeah uh so it's yeah. really heating up it is another fog of war game uh, mm-hmm. If you saw our episode that we did with Fingolfin, so that was another Fog of War game, but that was like kind of like the debut, like, oh, this is the first time that we're trying Fog of War in this format with Community Game. And uh, he did a vote, and the communities decided that we wanted to do another Fog game, but this time with a larger map that's a weird map. And I think, are, are we playing to 14? Is that what happened? Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a 14 point game compared to a 10 point game like the last one was. And I feel like it's been like, I mean, it it's definitely felt like more kind of like solidified, you know, mm-hmm. like more like people have an idea of what's going on. Um, and the map, I got to say, made by Homeboy Expendable. Yes. Yeah. He, he Expendable's gotten really, really into map making for yeah, fog well, stuff. No, no, map maps. Uh, well, his maps are not known for being good maps by the way in the sense of uh no they're like brutal (laughs) they're like brutal and they're very and very strange and yeah yeah don't play the faction i'm playing in a fog game yeah on his maps okay (laughs) i'll just say it because i think we've seen i'm I'm yin and i had a choice between yin and soul and uh, i had one planet next to home and there wasn't another system that close to my home for three tiles yep yep and i was yin I mean, you're talking you're talking about something that's not the community game at this moment. I want to make that yes. make that a yes. clarification for sure. Yeah, but that was an expendable map. Is yes, what I'm getting at yes. that tells you the type of map that he builds. No, totally, totally. And <laughs> he uh, he did it to me on this other game that he's gming, where uh, he ended up giving me speaker, and mm-hmm. I was like, oh, okay, that's tight. And then his trade off for giving me speaker is like, here's a slice that has like barely any influence. Oh. Like, like so bad where it's like i'm spending sem lore for influence you know like how bad is that dude like nothing greater than two and then also it's like nothing that's yeah. like solo influence you know what i mean it's like also like yeah. Saudor, where it's like could yeah. also be two resources so i'm like yeah making these token Fuck. buys where i'm just like slitting my wrist like no sem lore no. you're papa roach in it yeah oh my god dude it is Shalash resort gnarly dude but yeah, yeah. community game two no community game three brian and i never spent the the titans home system as anything but influence <laughs> oh. yeah it's too real yo no it's yeah. too real dude mm-hmm. yeah but uh but yeah no community game it's been good so far it's hard to know how much to say about it you know what i mean but yeah. um I feel like it's gotten to this point where like pretty much all the factions know each other, know what all yeah. the factions are. Uh, there's like this, there was this whole arc where like people got really scared of SAR, which is like, uh, ha- my team happens in every discovered. game, right? Oh, but, no, but oh. Like, I mean, SAR was, no, my team For sure. traded alliances with them and then would realize like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. they had 26 re- resources and 21 influence. Wow. Or the planets. Yeah. Wow. And custodians. Wow. The wild. And they have found Mirage and an asteroid field. Oh, man. Well, that's tight. You, you always yeah. love to see that. I made a meme about that one, too. Yeah. I made a meme about that one at some point, too. Wow. Yeah, and by the way, sorry if you're just now figuring this out. I don't know how else you would have figured it out. <laughs> yeah, sure, 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 sure. Wow. Yeah. But yeah. Wild. Yeah, I, I will not say too much about my situation and my team other than saying that uh, we're playing Empyrean. It has been okay. uh, awesome. It has been. It should be. Oh man, and it's uh, there's just some there's some elements about the whole situation that have made it feel just like so nostalgic. You know, it's mm-hmm. like I really feel like transported back to those glory yeah. days of of game two, and uh, we've just got such a fun team. Shout mm-hmm. out, shout out to Purple Team. We like decided really early on like what's going to be our whole angle, and it's just like we just went straight meme team, like just straight. <laughs> Straight, like, uh, you know, and the inspiration was the Eric Andre uh, uh, sketch where, where he's just like, what if it was purple? And, like, 
we're just like <laughs> what can we do it's almost like when jj did the franken thing and he's just like i'm gonna draft everything green you know it was like yeah. it was like that vibe where we were like okay as far as every decision that we could possibly make what if we could just make it like more purple you know like what yeah. if we what if we did this you know like yeah yeah it's that's awesome it's been great it's it's been great. that's awesome a lot of new I, faces I, in the game too gotta say keep, that. it's been my, awesome. my team talks so much and i've been so busy with work and like mm -hmm. other stuff that like i'll i mean i'm on every day and like i pop in and say something every day but like the man davy and uh doc mcstuffins and lucky lizard they're mm -hmm. uh they're bloodthirsty buddy oh sure me sure, and blt sure. like I, I have this wonderful deal a couple yeah. days ago like set out like with a team that we may have done some not nice things to mm -hmm. granted the not nice things were like well worth it mm -hmm. but i like got them their trust back i got them to agree to this favorable deal for both of us like a win-win mm -hmm. they're like nah we ain't doing that i'm like all right cool Go for it, guys! Right. They just boom, <laughs> <laughs> boom, pull the trigger. And my, my team's Titans, and yeah. um, yeah, Titans is uh, one of my favorite factions. I have one of my POK wins on them, but I play it very differently than Susan, mm -hmm. than Kyle, mm -hmm. than anyone else. Like they're real good at either eating someone's slice and ruining their game, or just sitting around and being defensive, which is what I prefer to play them as. Sure, um, yeah. So and it, it's been very nice, but like after I won my uh, prelim game, they're like, they're like, oh, wise tech god, that's my name on the server right now. What should we do here? And then I'll say something. <laughs> and it's then really they do, funny. And then they don't listen to you. No, they, they don't listen at all. <laughs> no, they don't. We just tech fucking war sons. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> cool. I guess we're doing. I was like, this, yeah, I, I was like, let's set up for two and two. They're like, or or. Or what if? <laughs> wow. Well, but I was so, like, it's a third yeah. unit upgrade. That's great. I love well, that. Well, sounds like they're <laughs> clowning on you just the right amount. Is, is oh, I love it. No, I yeah. love it so much, and I really like the team. Shout out to Yellow Team. Yeah, wouldn't yeah, have it any team, other way. For sure. For sure. Like in like Davy, his relationship with sar is like he goes in there and just talks shit it's like i fucking hate you all <laughs> and like they, they remind him that he's like you're really shit at diplomacy it's so funny it's so funny and i'm like i'm like in the middle of the serious negotiation oh God, and then he'll say something and they'll talk to him like and then i'm like don't talk shit about my boy davy yeah i know <laughs> like, totally yeah open yeah. the chats open yeah fawn <laughs> open the chats <laughs> Uh, I but, uh, no, it's a good yeah, vibe. It's, it's a good, good vibe. vibe. Uh, I love what Gold Team has going on. Where it, well, <laughs> the, Grogu. the Grogu thing? It's so great. I mean, <laughs> this is just something that happens in Fog because everyone wants to like you know be cute and change their like profile name or or pick or yeah. something on the server to like have it yeah. be this kind of like homogenous thing with your team. But with yeah. Fog, you also don't want to give away details or whatever until later. So people yeah. just kind of like go for either the color and they just kind of like organize around the color like Team Purple did this time. What if it was yeah. purple? Uh, but yeah. then um, Gold Team just decided to coalesce around Jadim Jedi's profile picture <laughs> of the little Grogu from the from the show thing from the yeah from uh, the man Mandalorian. the Mando show that one. But it was like they're Them all happening kids in their television. Series. Yeah, I know exactly. And they're just all <laughs> little Grogu's and they're posting yeah. the Grogu gifts. And it's just like so funny and so cute. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And then my other favorite is a green team. They were just like, uh, did the kind of a similar Tom's. thing but with Tom foolery. <laughs> I think it was. They're all Tom's. So they're no, just all Tom's. Old Tom oh my God. Or is it old so Tom? Good. Wait, no, no it's both of them are on the same team. Oh, so that's how it happened. It was just bo yeah. both of the Tom's and then yeah. it turned into <laughs> all the Tom's. Okay. So okay. Funny. Okay. I get it now. I get it. <laughs> yeah. But no, it's a, it's a great game. Honestly, it's uh it's going yeah. well. Uh, next time we will probably be telling you who won is uh, probably yeah. what we'll be doing. And honestly, uh, I'm just going to shout this out right now, just so I like it sticks in my head or whatever. Uh, at that point, we should just show everyone the map, you know, like mm -hmm. after the game is done, open the logs, yeah. show the map. <laughs> we got it. We got to see down. what's going on with that. That'd be tight. Uh, I'll remember yeah. to do that for sure. For sure. Uh, anything else to say before we meme it up? Nah, man. I, you know, honestly, if you're offering me memes, I'm like a horse. <laughs> living in the desert. It's, uh, I'll walk up and I'll 
Well, I'll mostly look at them. You'll be the one drinking of them. It's so. true. It's true. Mm -hmm. Well, I have some good memes to share with you this time. Yeah, you go ahead and pull those up. I always have trouble <laughs> remembering who who did who did oh, the memes. Oh, I got them. I got them all. Brass right here, Birds buddy. Mega Meme Center coming right <laughs> to you. We're gonna go for meme number one. It is this one is from Liver Squatch. I remember now from the obligatory memes channel on the async server. And I had to include this one because I mean, it's a great format, but also it just like is a personal frustration uh, <laughs> of mine that I must do. And this is almost like a PSA meme, you know, uh, whose turn is it? This is the actions channel, all sorts of people. And you know, I'm guilty of my own like amount of like polluting the actions channel and everything. But uh, there's people that just do full on conversations in the actions channel, like trying to figure stuff out. And it's like, yo, this is what the table talk channel is for. And the one that drives me crazy is all the bot commands in the actions channel. Like yep. there's the bot commands channel for <laughs> a reason, by the way. <laughs> And if you want to have a combat, you can make a thread, but people don't do that either. People yeah. just people just roll all their dice in the actions channel. It clutters the whole thing mm -hmm. up. So yeah, I don't know. I had to put this one in for that oh, reason. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you got anything to say on the subject, or are you nah, guilty? Man, I, uh, I'm as guilty. Charged? I, I am the problem. <laughs> I am the fucking problem, man. Dude, I literally I live to socialize. Like it's my entire play style is to suck and socialize. So I, I can't turn it off. Fair. That's fair. I literally cannot turn it off. Hilarious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Taking it on over to meme number two. This mm -hmm. one is from Anonymous. Mm -hmm. on the Inanna memes channel. Yep. And I don't I don't even have a guess of, of who Me this either. is. I don't... That's, that, that, yeah, that's how you know it's a good meme format because exactly. it's like classic. Yeah. Pure classic. It's it's classic, it's simple, it's elegant. It is a story that is so quintessentially fog. Yep. And uh, you love it. You love it. Yep. It's uh it's just the fear of the unknown right that's that's like what like that other meme that i made where it's like the fog of war starter pack like a constant <laughs> sense of existential dread you know <laughs> you know <laughs> it's because there's this shit that goes on and i actually had this uh, i had this very like dark moment i mean not like that dark but it was just a moment where i felt i felt personally like kind of evil with the tactics that i was doing and i uh, oh man it's when i recently took moose's home system in in this game and yeah you oh yeah and i was i was gonna do this move where it's like well i'm just gonna put the whole invasion fleet right next to his home system and make this big show about it and whatever and then i realized like oh but he could see that coming obviously because yeah. it's right next to his home system. So what I did instead first, and the, uh, I got into a little combat with Matt in this empty, but it's like, I told him that I was coming and I told him I was going to take Moose's home system. And I just sent the smallest force in there and yeah. just Matt and I like Hollywooded it up. Like I'm yeah. causing this big problem for Matt and yeah. I'm being all yeah. apologetic. Like I'm just trying to score empties, man. That's all. Like, yeah. I'm really sorry about this, but is yeah. there any way? And we just like put on the show for moose and yeah. then literally in the asteroid field directly behind that oh my God. was this massive invasion fleet, like two carriers, like, seven fighter twos like one mech five infantry like and uh and i was playing sardak by the way yeah and uh and i just like rolled in and he had like you know he had no vision on it like he yeah. had no idea it was coming you i'm know? about to do you one better it's oh yeah a nasty thing i'm about to do oh yeah so we're on that expendable map we're in the middle like it's the biggest map they offer mm -hmm. like for yes for in, in async oh yeah no it's, it's the new huge game. one yeah yeah so I'm in the middle and three edge comes out and I'm like, one, I'm playing fucking yin. Yeah. Okay. By the way, by like the way. we can't, we can't get anywhere. So like, and now we have to go to the edge. Awesome. <laughs> so we're, we've unlocked our hero and we've learned where some edges are. Uh, and then we tanked. 
Y-E. Yeah. And there's two PDS2 factions, so we're wiping out three different PDS on the edge. Oh, Infinity my and IE building on all of the oh, all wow. three planets, Schroeders, and then Schrodering to the Stroder. edge. Schroeder. Schroeder. <laughs> yep. That's incredible. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah, dude. I mean, yin, um, yin sucks, but that is a really cool thing that you could do with them. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we double skipped. Like, we went from Sar- Sarween directly up to IE, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That cracks me up so much. Wow. Yeah, dude. We spent Lazar and I can't remember. Sakala. Whatever. Whatever. Anyways. Whichever one is. Yellow skips. Yeah. Wow. Well, but yeah. No. We are going to. So they're just going to see it what? coming. We know all three planets are empty with nothing but PDS on them. Well, they're going to see it coming now because you blabbed about <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm doing it like when we get done airing. Oh, uh, okay. Well, yeah, it's my go. turn to yeah, do that. For yeah. sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Well, we are going to. edit it that quick. Yeah. Good on you. <laughs> yeah. We are going to go ahead and move on to meme number three. What do we got? I can't even remember. Oh, yeah. This one's from Jadim Jedi. Oh, man. Pat, this is from the community gym from the community <laughs> game uh, server. And I just had to put this on there. And I'm glad I talked about the Grogu thing to prime, prime, yeah. the, prime the whole situation here. But yeah. Grogu literally only want one thing, and it's fucking disgusting. And... <laughs> <laughs> they just want all the tokens. It's that I love, easy. I love it so I love much. that so much. Yeah. Like, I love the I oh. love that format every oh. time. It, every no, time it, I see it. This yeah, absolutely. No, this this meme format is really, really a banger. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And uh I he comboed it with another one. I almost had difficulty deciding between this and the other one, which was a Pokemon one. And it was like, mm-hmm. gotta catch them all. Special Mahawk CC to FS color <laughs> all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, but this man. one, this one just barely beat it out. And uh, mm-hmm. man, it, it looks like they're having a grand time as, as yeah. the Mahawk. It looks like they're having a great game. They've got all these tokens. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know. I heard that they're having trouble with their secrets. But besides that, it seems like it's a great team having a great time. So. Yeah, uh, heart, I agree. heart goes out to you, Grogu's. Actually, I, I think love any you. team that JJ's been on has had like a really good time in the community game. That says oh, a lot totally. about him, except um, for the last game. Well, no, we had a good time. <laughs> no, we did. I was on oh, that no. team. We I'm had just, a good time. I, I know, I know. I'm just fucking. <laughs> I'm just fucking getting it. We talked I'm about the getting, shit yeah. wagon. Yeah. <laughs> no, but no, on but but I know what you're saying. Like JJ is such yeah. a sweetie, and it's it's easy to have a good time with him. That's what I'll say. That's what I'll yeah. say for sure. All right, moving on to meme number four. This one, I remember, this one's Mobius, right? Mobius 46? Yep. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. A classic memer has been on here before, I'm sure. It's uh, it's a straightforward uh, progression with the meme and then the, the fucking punchline of the Stroder 2. The Stroder 2 yeah. punchline is so good. And it's so mm-hmm. like, I don't know, Stroders are just the most memeable thing ever. So it's like, of course, the Stroder beam has to make it on here. Yeah. Of course. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love it. And it's definitely worth the laugh. But I mean, yeah. if, if you were going to actually like do matchups here, I mean, mm-hmm. I think the I think the barony fleet in the middle really destroys the Stroders, right? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> those yeah. are actually well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, those are yeah. Actually, the, the counter to fighters those. probably win. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, like, no, I mean, like Stroder twos, like fucking, yeah, just, guess, oh, like, really oh yeah. Well, if you combine the barony fleet with like a one or two Stroders, untouchable. Yeah, untouchable. Lights yeah. out. Lights yeah, out. Literally no say. lights on. That's all yeah. I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I've no, never totally. played Barony and I never want to, by the way. Well, not how about you listen to the thing in the episode <laughs> that's going to be later and then maybe you'll think about trying them, okay? Well, why okay. don't you okay. stop okay. being such okay. a bitch about okay. it, okay? Okay. Like, <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit. Uh, the gloves oh, are oh, off, oh. dude. Of this the day of my cat's quinceanera? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you're fucking killing me dude you're killing me all right we're we're gonna keep it moving here keep it moving meme number five. Oh yes 
Oh yes, you're gonna have to say yeah, the name. Yeah, that's great. You're gonna have to say the name of the memer for me because I like Colion. Colion, that's it. That's it for mm-hmm. sure. For sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There, there was a funny uh, caption to this. This one's from Meme City, so it's like you kind of <laughs> have to caption the meme in Meme City, which I like. I like you know you gotta yeah. come up with some kind of title or something to like hook somebody into the meme or whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. But there, I, if I remember correctly, I'm like paraphrasing it as like. It was like the the cover to TI five clown fiesta of the fiestas <laughs> or some shit yeah. like that. But it's just simple. It's so like high res because it's literally working with this giant high res image. So it's like yep. it's magnificent in its glory. And, mm-hmm. all, and all of the clown faces are so perfectly attached to them. Yep. <laughs> No, that, that, that's some real, so we, we'll bad. watch his career with great interest. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. That's all I'm yeah, going to say about I, it. I always love putting a new memer into the mix here, and this one is yeah. just uh, just yeah. incredible, just magnificent. 100%. Right? For real, I'm, for real, no cap. I am honestly like want to put this as the background to my computer, like just as like the maybe, desktop wallpaper maybe or you something. Do. Like. <laughs> maybe you do, you know? <laughs> Think about it. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Wow. All right. Well, we're not done. We Ooh. have we have a bonus meme. We Hot do dog. we do have a bonus meme. And so this one yeah. is gonna take a little explaining, I think. And the image yeah. so the image is like I had to put this one in because I couldn't find where the uh, the where the original was. But it, yeah. gi- it gives you just a bit of context if you can read the text here. Mm-hmm. Um, th- it all came from this original post. And I you know, I had to do this for Phil Roy because he is so stoked about this like meme, like underground meme that's happening. But it's all got to do with the beans. <laughs> it's all about it's like bean memes. And he's just obsessed with the bean memes right now. And I'm like here yeah. for it. But you yeah. have to like, it's almost like you have to go back and read his original thing where it's like, mm-hmm. he was talking about like his thought process with this game design and like how he's trying to like design this one thing. And then he's essentially the joke is that he's like thinking about it in such a granular level of detail that it's going down to like these basic market forces of like this faction is trying to sell beans to the other faction or something like that. (laughs) Like he was just like trying to make that point of like, I'm thinking about things on this level where we're talking about the price of beans is what we're talking about on this one planet. And then it just sprung from there. And then then, then and cat jumps on the, on the bandwagon. (laughs) Yep. Pax Magnifica legumen gloriosum. (laughs) You love to see it. So yeah. So, um, so just had to yeah. put this out there. Just like had to put a pin in it and say like, "Hey, there's bean memes." By the way, if you did not yeah, know, yeah, there are. And um, also, uh, there's it's a running gag uh, in my relationship because uh, I have like ten cans of fucking beans in my 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 only food in my house is like ten cans of beans. There you go. That's it. Yeah, I, dude, I'm, I'm also yeah, I'm also guilty of having several cans of beans in yeah. uh, in the in the pantry yeah. for sure for yeah. sure. Because I just forget I own beans and I keep buying them. And there's also that famous uh, Donald Trump thing with beans. DM me for it. I can't talk about it on air. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> but yeah, Ixthian Beans coming to you at, at a grocery store near you soon enough. Uh, look out for the <laughs> Ixthian Beans. You love to see it. Love to see it. Oh, wow. man. So yeah, solid. Uh, yes. Solid, solid offering. That has been another Brass Birds Mega Meme Center. Thank you so much for joining us. It was lovely. It was wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, Frox, what do you say we take it on over to hang with our homeboy, Murderous Troll? Hello, fa- hello, past me. Yeah. Sounds like a wonderful time. <laughs> it was. You know how we love our Aussies on this show, and we're just going to – that's all we're going to do right now is we're just going to hang with one of our Aussies is what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. All right, everybody. We're here. Welcome, welcome. It is a very special, very fun time. We are joined for, uh, by our friend from Down Under. Wouldn't you know it? We are joined by <laughs> Murderous Troll, the hey, one. The hey, hey, what's up, Troll? Good. Yeah, everything's good. Good. 
Excellent. Oh, yeah. Excellent. We got Troll here on the podcast to uh, mostly plug the uh, Melbourne tournament that is uh, just right around the corner. But we're going to talk about other stuff as well. You know how we love our Aussies on this show. <laughs> Literally, we're huge in Australia. If we had a tour, it'd probably be there. Yeah, yeah. honestly. <laughs> Yeah, more downloads there than in my home state. So that, you know, that makes me feel great. (laughs) Yeah, we're going to have Old Wolf in the audience with just like a sign that's like, I love you guys. That's our biggest fan right there. By the way, Tim, Tim, he is our biggest fan. I'm like 98% sure. Yeah. Yeah, you could probably run a you know side show into New Zealand at the same time. Visit oh. Big L while you're there. Oh, why not? Oh, well, thousand percent. Uh, why not? Well, we got like four. Oh, anyways, I'll, I'll yeah. go to this when we're not on I, air. Yo, but, I'm uh, I'm gonna play. I just gotta say because we mentioned Big Al, I'm really excited. I'm going to play in Big Al Big Al's birthday game. That is oh a, shit. It's a Ti Junkies game. Oh it, man. Yeah, so I'm on that whole train now. I'm hanging out with those fools, you know. And uh, Heck yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to I'm going to yeah, play you, Argent. You bet the Miss Hoot Nanny, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. It was awesome. Uh Hoot Nanny was yeah. so sick, honestly. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah. They're, they're lovely people and yeah, uh, I can't but, yeah. can't wait for Al to win his birthday game. <laughs> going to happen yeah, Gar- guaranteed that'd be the present to him is let him play winu and be in like the best slice and have speaker oh no he's gonna he's gonna be titans bullshit. he's gonna be fine he's oh, shit. he's okay. literally gonna be fine yeah he'll oh. he'll get there on his own steam you know <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right but trolls sorry for our oh he's so good at it it's yeah. unreal <laughs> i'll have you know i win slayed him in my one game with him so haha <laughs> no, there, uh, there we go Anyways, Troll, do you want to tell us a bit about, like, the... Well, actually, you know, before we go to the tournament, tell us a little about yourself. So you're obviously in Australia. Uh, where, whereabouts yep. are you at? So Melbourne. So okay. in Victoria, down in Melbourne. So um, mm-hmm. I probably started playing TI at TI3. Oh. Um, so that was probably, like, Love 2016, it. 2017. Love it. Um, probably played a couple of games. And then uh, for my birthday, my mates bought me TI4. Oh, Which shit. You have some cool, awesome cool mates. Present. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. That's a great yeah. gift. Yeah. It was a great gift. And then for the next three years, they proceeded to never let me win a single game <laughs> in, that, in the following three years. So it was a, oh. it was a bit of a Trojan horse. Yeah. <laughs> I I empathize with this. I empathize with this very much, man. Yeah. That's so yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was great. Um, and uh, look, at, at that point... Um, Obviously, Melbourne, we ended up, you know, in lockdown for a very, very, very long time here. And uh, during that period, uh, I'd heard on Space Cat so you could play online. And uh, one one night, uh, uh, you know, uh, being a little stressed out, needing to blow off a bit of steam, I jumped on. And it was about 9 o'clock at night, and I jumped into this game. Uh-oh. And it ran until about 3.30. Woo! It's like, I know, I know where this is going. Yeah. That's a short yeah. game, actually. Yeah. <laughs> could have yeah. been worse. Yeah. It yeah. could have been worse, but it just so happened that I was really lucky and that one of the players in there was an Aussie player. And he said to me, oh, are you, you know, are you in the Aussie discord? And I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. I've just started yeah. here. And, uh, and, he, and he dragged me over there. And to be honest, that first game was the only game I've ever played in Gen Pop. And ever since then, I've been in the, the Aussie discord, yes. which has, uh, which, yeah, which plays some hours, which are a little bit more, um, uh, let's say dad friendly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sort of split, yeah, yeah. So split sessions, say eight till midnight, kind of thing, and mm-hmm. you know after work. But that became like a bit of a family there for us during the lockdown because um, oh, I'm sure you know. You, oh, it yeah. was, it was. There was, there was nothing else. It was you know work from home during the day, look after the kids, homeschooling, and then at night time it, uh, it it became. Uh, I could have kind of described it as the virtual pub mm. where you yeah. Get your pod, you, yeah, you'd jump on there with a bunch of other other dads and, you know, occasionally have, you know, a drink while you're having a game of TI. Yeah. Yep. And, um, yeah, it became something really, really, uh, really, really special for all of us. Um, mm-hmm. We were probably doing that for about a year when the, the restrictions really started to ease up. And then mm-hmm. we thought, you know what, we're going to have a tournament down here in Melbourne. And, mm-hmm. um, and, uh, we we booked it in. We had around about forty five people booked in to come uh, from all around Australia. Um, so we had people who were coming from uh, New South Wales, from Queensland, 
South Australia, everywhere. Um, the, at that time, the only place we couldn't get people in from was New Zealand and Perth, and Perth, because they'd effectively kind of sealed those places off. But uh, everyone else was due to come in, and then and this was 2021, and about oh, let's say a couple of days before, well, a couple of weeks before the tournament, some restrictions started to creep back in, and then a couple of days before the tournament, it was back to full lockdown. And so oh. that, it was. Uh, it was comp- so we refunded everyone. It was it was, a bit, it was a little bit um. That's brutal. A bit annoying. It yeah, was, but yeah. I mean, look. I mean, in the context of everything that had happened that year, canceling yeah. a tournament was not the worst thing that that could have happened. Sure, yeah, totally. But, uh, but um, anyway, so we kept playing online. We kept going to the pub every night as we did, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and um, and and a year later, it, we were we were out and things are looking good and we put the tournament we, we, we said we're going to have another go at this and uh and we booked it in and this time we actually got tabletop games in burwood which is a, a big suburban game shop to um to host us and they, they were really really great and we actually had 45 people come for that tournament in 2022 so we had people like big al flew in from new zealand we had mm-hmm. people from perth because perth could Perth was open again and we had yeah it was it was just absolutely wild it was oh. it was like um think of it like you know you're like a family reunion after not having seen everyone totally yeah, except, you, except that you had never seen anyone you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but these guys that are, they had all been uh the people who were supporting you and you know mm-hmm. keeping you in good spirits over the last 12 or 18 months and and they were all there so it was wow. um it was a really, really big deal. So that's um, and lots of new faces as well. Mm-hmm. Lots of people who like quite a few people who'd only played a handful of games with friends. Um, it just became like this really friendly uh, environment. So and then from that we we had you know quarterly game days that we had. We probably get between twenty and thirty people come every three months for game days. And uh, and this year we put it back on again. We said uh, we're going to do it again and. At the moment, we're up to about thirty-eight tickets sold, with a you know just a little over three weeks to go. Really hoping to get to forty-eight, so we can get some good prizes and yeah, uh, some really good stuff. But and and you know, an eight-player final would be pretty cool. Oh, that'd be yeah. so tight! Oh yeah. my god! Yeah. Wow. Oh god, an eight-player in-person game. What's that like? Sixteen hours in the Aussie <laughs> format? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, we're probably gonna have to find a way to push it along. I reckon, but um, sure. yeah, uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it, it would be pretty cool. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, we, we, we're really yeah, we're, that's that's the that's the goal. That's the stated goal. So yeah, and 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 to you know hang around and have a great time. So. Um, yeah, that's that's what that's what the the Aussie scene is all about. That's what the Aussie tournament's all about, and mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's been really really good. Wow, that is so beautiful, man. That like yeah, just I that mean, yeah, just the vibes, the feeling. Like, like it's great. I what, like if I was what the there, show's about man. Yeah, if I was there, like I would just start crying. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, he I would, by the way. He, he he's a crier. <laughs> very he's emotional. Crying, yeah. Very. No, big, no shame. Yeah. I'm big shame. Heart, I just you know, I cackle. Yeah, it's really weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, that's, no, man, that's, that's so is, awesome. that is incredible. Mm. Uh, so, uh, what, what I have to ask, what's your rank in the dojo? Ooh, yeah. Over on, uh, mm-hmm. over, I, over I on the vet, Aussie server. I am vet three, but I. Ooh. Uh, okay. uh, <laughs> oh, I didn't win a game yeah. for three years. Humble brag. Vet three. Humble okay. brag over here. <laughs> yeah, I always feel like, uh, you know, you've always got a little bit of imposter syndrome with these. Like, sure. You know, yeah. you, you, you're never a hundred percent certain that you're deserving of that. But mm. yeah, look, I mean, yeah, I, I've, I have beat some pretty good, cool, good players. I've, I've, you know, I have won games against, Big Al, I've won games against Sun Tzu, mm-hmm. um, but to be honest, some of the some of the players on the Aussie Discord are just uh, crazy good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We actually had a game um, a little while ago at one of the guys' houses. It was um, and we had cool guy there. We right. had um, a lady yeah, friend had, of the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we had a good friend of the show. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, and and a bunch of other really great players. And it was another one of those games that started out at eight in the morning, and it was a fourteen pointer, but it Woo! ran until eleven o'clock that night. Oh man! 
I love it, like, dude. And I'll say y'all don't take of... breaks. <laughs> y'all don't take breaks, right? <laughs> yeah, well, there's a bit of a funny story. There was uh, the guy who was hosting us, uh, Zadex. He was making us lunch, and um, he's you know beautiful spread of uh, pulled pork burgers and you know oh. the, the whole thing, right? Like really looked after oh. us. And we're all sitting outside, you know, having a having a drink or, or whatever else, and. Um, and unfortunately for Zadex, he was in the lead, so <laughs> oh, uh, no. so we did we did have to talk about uh, some some wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> While he's like beating you, you're like munching, you're <laughs> munching on the pulled pork. Like so, anyway. He's like, okay, oh, 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 oh I'm gonna take your home. Minus two for that for that sandwich, by the way. Uh, so, <laughs> what um, I'm hearing is you don't want to refresh. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we came up with a very convoluted plan to slay him, wow. but um, uh, it, it fell apart when when one of the players refused to uh to to, to um to do it. Uh... So I ended up attacking him instead. <laughs> <laughs> I will take the ring to Mordor. Yeah, no, I mean, I re I really empathize with Zadex. I had uh, a situation that was very much the same where I hosted. <laughs> In this room that you're seeing right behind me, I had to move a bunch of furniture around, but yep. I had a six-player game. Kaluan was there. Sunshine Punch was there. Zethril was there. Just like uh, Miles, like just, just like the homies. And I had like gone all out. It was, uh, I found out that uh, Zethril has the same birthday as both Kaluan and I. So I went, oh, whoa. yeah. So I went and wow. got a cake from Fred Meyer. I went and got the best frozen pizza that Fred Meyer can <laughs> offer. And I just went all out, you know, it's like, I'm feeding them. I've got beers in the fridge, you know, like I've got all this stuff going on and they just like completely destroyed me. They just like completely <laughs> like ripped me apart. Like and, you can't even leave the game early because no, it's at your house. No, exactly, like, exactly. <laughs> and the, and the whole time I was just like, lovely table, beautiful time, having a great time. Like as they're just like ranching me, like so thoroughly. <laughs> like I mean, that's just the way the objectives laid out. Like I pulled a bunch of attachments, and I'm Jolnar, and the attachments are in all the attachments are in my slice. So everyone's just yep. like, uh, all right, I'm coming to score that point. I'm cut party partying in your slice, dude. Oh, it, you uh, couldn't even convince them to that you couldn't even convince them to rent it as a as an no. example, but no, exactly. they're like, Oh, why, why would I pay for it when yeah. I can have it for free? Yeah. <laughs> you use your agent one too many times, Bucko. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. One, once was too much, man. No. Oh honestly. that no, I mean why? well we community game, we can we can talk about that. Oh but, sure, um, sure, 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 yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh Wow. Yeah. Gosh. So I empathize with that. I empathize with that. But, you know, it's like, uh, you know, uh, I've also learned recently just exactly how hard the Aussies play, you know? Yeah. And it's uh, it's like a totally different style. It's And it's like sparked this whole conversation again for me of like the most interesting part for me is the different ways that people approach the game and play. And sometimes that causes conflict. Right. You know, like yeah. people really can't see eye to eye sometimes of like, why would you do it like that? Why would you do this? I mean, why it's a philosophical you know? debate, right? Exactly. Like, and that's what's so interesting to me. Like, why, why, why do we play the game, man? Like exactly. I play to have fun and I don't want anyone at the table not having fun. Totally. So that's yeah. why I always have the conversation. You know, yeah. Starts, like, yeah. Okay. What kind of fucking game we have? It. <laughs> like, uh, like it are out. we, are we point is point denial going to like ruin your fucking time? Mm -hmm. My tournament games is Sunday. I'm going to have the conversation. I'm friends with four of the people at the table. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, only two of them, I don't know, but mm. you, that, that's what I'm getting at though. It's like, you For gotta sure. have that conversation. Like, even though this is a tournament game, I, I realize like, you know, all bets should be off. Like sure. to me, personally like i'm playing this game to have fun like i don't like obviously winning is fun but like your game to honestly god your goal if you sit down at the table play tide and period should not be to win the fucking game it's like like well that should be your goal but like i mean like the overarching purpose mm -hmm. like you're you got to have a good time that's my thing yeah sure it's an experience in a yes. box isn't it really it's uh yes it's about telling the story mm -hmm. of, of what happened in that galaxy on that day yeah but you know it it is interesting that you kind of mentioned the whole, uh, you know, philosophy around how to play. Uh, there are people who will only play with others who just point block because they feel like the game should be just a total yeah. all-out war. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and and they don't like that point trading meta at all. Um, and, and if I sit down at a table and they tell me that, I'll fucking play yeah. that game because I expect it. You know, that, that's yeah. my thing. I don't I don't think there is a right way to play it Word. other than as long as we we agree. Yeah. On how we're yeah. playing this. Yeah. Yeah. Troll, what is yeah. your take yeah. on on it and the, and yeah. everything like the Aussie play style? Like where do, where do you fit into it personally? Uh, I, I for me, I'm not the most aggressive player. I know that uh, you know that story just then sounds like a <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> we have one story about you on record and honestly i'm a little worried about what you're saying now <laughs> yeah but uh, re- realistically i probably sit on the more pacifist end of the the scale i don't mind some point trading uh i don't mind knocking a player down when they're ahead um but you know yeah i find it a little bit uh, the extortion meta i find difficult probably I've learned that you have, if you're going to do extortion meta, you have to do what you said you were going to do if the extortion fails. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if any one time you don't do it, then it's just, it's like weakness. And yeah. people oh. will just be like, well, why would uh, I pay your extortions yeah. in the future? I was just, oh, yeah. Especially on the Aussie server, like yeah. everyone's going to know, like you don't back yeah. your word up. Like it's a tight yeah. community. Like, yeah, same with like yeah. SCPT stuff for sure. So I think for me, because I'm not the most aggressive player, I don't think I can play extortion meta. But so because of that, I'll play relatively defensively a heavy plastic game. Yeah, just make it too hard f- to mess with me. Um, and if that means I sit at the back of the points for a while and look for a path later on, then that's generally how I'll go and sometimes the path will open up and then sometimes you just get a game where you just did nothing for 10 hours (laughs) dude I'm not kidding we have the same play style Mm -hmm. literally the same play style Mm -hmm. like it is a miracle if I leave my slice an actual miracle right yeah (laughs) yeah 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 no, but Unless I get yinned, and then I don't have a slice, but that's you know, another story for yeah. another time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, it is. It is. Um, the Aussie meta is. Uh, it is. Uh, it is pretty tough, um, but it's also pretty jovial and friendly, and um, you know, there's a lot of uh, you, you, you know the Aussie style of you know always hanging shit on your friends and mm-hmm. yeah. all that kind of stuff. So yep. yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's a it's 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 a good community, good place to be around. So. Uh, but you do have to find the right people to play with. I know that I played an async game recently where I was nomad and there was an Arborek player who was just, actually it was Zadex again. <laughs> <laughs> do you just not like him? Like, that's <laughs> no, to say you don't like him. <laughs> no, I love, I love him. I love him. He's great. But, um, he, he was, he was out of it. He was out, he was down, out for the count. He was mm-hmm. well behind in points, well behind in everything. And and I was doing okay. Like I was probably winning, or maybe in 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 the I was in the mix, right? And he just said, "You know what? I'm just going to take out like half like the planet in front of your home system, and um, I'm just going to hold it because I'm Arborek, and that's that's what I do." And he goes, "And I'm hoping that by dragging you down." that might encourage you to fight the other leaders <laughs> and, and he goes and maybe i still don't win but mm. it gives me the possibility of a path and i was really furious about it for say like and it's async so the salt just like oh my god lift. it it, it, ne- it never lifts like you yep. have to live with a move for the next like four weeks yeah and, <sighs> and and um and i was really salty about it and but I did learn a lot out of it and uh, I learned a lot about what the game is and it, you have to be a little bit resilient mm-hmm. when it yeah. comes to this game. You can't let those things uh, upset you because there's another game down the road and something different will happen. And in the end, in that game, even with that setback, I think at the end there was three players that probably could have won it in in the final round on the first round of action phase. And it just so happened that I was probably like second or third on initiative mm-hmm. that uh, that I had the that I had a possible win if the first two had fallen over it didn't end up being that way but um yeah the point was that you know if you if you're within initiative order of winning a game and you don't win it that's to me that's as good as 
as good as winning anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, uh, totally. I mean, the initi- initiative order is an initiative order. It's just part of the game. Like you can't, yeah. you can't, you can't mitigate for every every factor in the game. So yeah. if you if you're there or about, so you had a shot at it, that's great. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, you do have to you, you you do have to know who you're playing with. You have got to be resilient. It's a tough game. People. There's a lot of emotion. It's a long game, so you have to live with what you're doing for a really long period of time, even longer in async. So, uh, mm. yeah, it's uh, yeah, but yeah, I can see why the the point trading meta is probably more prevalent in in other metas because you don't feel so bad about it at the end of it. Yeah, yeah it's but. it's easier to have a good time at at the end mm. for sure, for yeah. sure. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Totally, totally. I, yeah. I I can disagree with that, to be honest, Brass. Like oh, the sure. point trading stuff, because like with the with the objectives that are out there, like you're not not everyone's gonna be trading points. Like it's just quite mm. frankly, like yeah, like with pacing and everything, like someone's gonna have to score two unit two unit upgrades while everyone else is expanding borders. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean? And like sure, you're both getting a point, but like one point's better than the other, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, I just feel like. Uh, I feel like you can be point blocked in that way too, and like that's like something I think sometimes the physical point blockers don't like think about, you know, if that makes sense. Um, You're talking about like getting point blocked as far as like, like, like you got like, strong like someone knocks you off your third empty. Oh, okay. Yeah, like like someone knocks you off your third empty. That's like what I mean by like that's the point physical point blocking. Yeah. Whereas like being forced to score your unit upgrades in round four when uh, your first initiative in round yeah, five, yeah, yeah. like that's a pretty big difference. No, totally, like, totally. To me. Yeah. That, that, like I, that's why I like I can at least like that'd be less fun for me I guess like the point blocking can happen either way it's just different um, yeah if yeah. that makes sense guys Sorry, no I mean no it no it, do, it does make sense and I feel like yeah. that's where I rub up against like heavy negotiating stuff like oh I hate I, that I was gonna make this funny joke earlier when <laughs> Frox when you were like oh troll you and I have like the same play style I was yeah. I was gonna say that I have the same play style as Al as far as like wilding out and throwing plastic to like the far corners of the board and shit. But yeah. I, but I can't talk like Al, you know what I mean? No. Like I can't, I just can't do that. Like I'm just like, Dude, not I, 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 I can tell you what, what happens yeah. and it doesn't happen to Al. Unfortunately you mm-hmm. get frustrated. <laughs> like you get frustrated when like, like they're not immediately perceptive. Oh, and God. like, I, I fall victim yeah. to the same thing. Cause For you're sure. like, am I speaking the same fucking language as you buddy? Word, word, so, word. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll fucking admit to that, bro. I de- yeah. definitely yeah, do Al's get just like, salty. Oh, it's fine. And then I'll move on to the next person. Cause yeah, like, if sure. they're not buying this guy will. Yeah. 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 Like the, the used car salesman. Like, exactly. He goes, yeah. I'll just keep knocking on doors until someone says yes. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Totally. And, and yeah, and that's my frustration is that I can't like, I can't talk at that well, you know what I mean? So yeah. like when it, and when it comes to a negotiation like that and to use that exact same example that you were saying, where it's like, if someone was telling me like, well, it's okay. I mean, like you can still score this round. Why don't you just score your two unit upgrades and then like I'll yeah. borrow one of your planets so I can expand borders and then you know yeah. we'll like do a little swap around or or whatever. If I was in that situation, like I like I would be able to tell like this is like actually putting me in a disadvantaged like situation. And yeah, because, I because two, two unique upgrades is a locked point. No one can take it off you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. So I would be able to sense that, and I would, you know, not be able to negotiate my way out of that. And I would probably just choose violence or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? hey, no, you're fine. You're talking to me, buddy. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, it's 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 hard. It's a and it's a it's just the way it goes sometimes. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I do. I do like a good negotiation. I'm not. I'm not big our level of negotiating, but mm. um, I usually like to pick someone in a game who's just like that's the guy that me and him are going to get to the end of the game, and one of us is going to win. Mm. <laughs> like, oh that's, yeah, that's, a, mm-hmm. that's another thing I love to do. Oh, I love you know, that yeah. so much. I it's so yeah. hard to like fucking trust people these days though man because sure. i've been playing with like a lot of a lot of fucking snakes lately though yeah only person there are two people that i trust in a game well three because brass is actually one of them if, if you buddy up with brass he's there oh. flight of fancy mm. and cody T- ctc those or cody yeah. t connecticut those two are like yeah uh, yeah 
like oh, yeah. literally yeah we're best friends now it's fine never no, betray totally, you totally the the other yeah. one i gotta uh, throw out is uh gad's dead gad's dead is oh, the really? best never, well, Ga- oh he's i'm currently in a game with die. gad but he, i think he's literally physically as far away from someone in a ti game for me as has actually <laughs> ever been possible because it's on that like 50 tile map oh yeah that, for sure mm-hmm. yeah so there's no way. Yeah. There's no way to actually support it. Oh, I, I don't even know. I, I haven't seen them yet. And yeah. we're, we're in round four. Oh, for yeah. sure. Oh, it's a fog game. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. That, well, that that's an yeah. entirely different thing. It's like, I feel like ride or die partnerships are much harder to accomplish in the oh, fog. Yeah. Like, oh, for sure. Yeah. Don't, don't yeah, even get me but, started on it, bro. But uh, sorry wow. to get us on a tangent there, friends. I'm pretty good at that. But uh, <laughs> not at all. I think uh, <laughs> we in the um in the space cats tournament mm-hmm. uh i played the the first game what is it what are they called the prelims qualifiers Qual- qualifiers. Qualifiers. qualifiers yeah qualifiers yep yeah so qualifiers and uh i was in a game with cool guy because it's impossible to get times to work mm-hmm. um, for aussies in in the um in that tournament and uh he was he was uh hakan and i was joel Nart. Mm-hmm. And it was just, uh, we were just doing the catfish. 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 I, <laughs> yo, Rass, you that I, game, stream, you? I streamed your game. I yeah, did. Oh, you I did, did too. Yeah, yeah I you did. did. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, did. I remember I we now. Accused, I think we were getting accused of coercion. It, there was no coercion. It was just very convenient. No, it was just. Well, catfishing <laughs> is catfishing. Just, no, like, that, I was going to say that. Like, it's like, you can call it what it is or whatever, but it's just catfishing, you know? And collusion. Just like, that's what you wanted. Coll- collusion. collusion. for sure. For sure. <laughs> I mean, like, if, if someone, like, calls collusion. it out like that, then it's catfishing. like, it's like, obviously that's what it is because, like, that's what catfishing is, you know, in this context. It is. Catfishing. It is. I can't give you oh, a minute. Yeah. I don't know why it's so fucking funny. <laughs> okay, okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's um, you know, and and sure enough, in that game, it was like, all right, cool guy, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna buddy up with him. We're gonna catfish. One of us is gonna win, and, and sure enough, he did win. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, I reckon that's a cool play style as well. But very frustrating for everyone else at the table. <laughs> but sure. usually, what happens is it just becomes a two v two v two, and then and then at some point, somebody. Uh, somebody breaks ranks and wins. So, but th- yeah. that can be fun too because going back to what you're saying earlier, that that is a cool story to tell. You know, it's the story of these three alliances that you know fought this battle out, and then at some point, someone wrested the the throne mm-hmm. uh, to take out the victory at the end. So, I really, I, I love your storytelling angle about like what you're sitting yeah. down at a table of TI to do. Yeah, like yeah, well, the more I'm yeah. thinking about it, I really like I, that. Yeah. Yeah, well, it is. It is. It's a. It's a story. I mean, um, you know, <laughs> there's just so many games. And look, back to the the Melbourne, you know, TI scene, if if you want to call it that. There's there's probably thirty people that you can get a game with any time that you wanted. We probably play. You probably play every two months. We get a game. Wow. With um. That's awesome. You know, with six or seven of us, you could if you put a if you put a game, posted a game now in the chat. You'd get a game in a week if you wanted a, a game going, uh, no problems awesome. at all. Um, and they're also great. You go to their houses, everyone puts on something. If you come to my place, we, you know, I'll put on pizzas. You go I was to say, you got that pizza oven, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You go to uh, there's one guy there, Jesse. You go to his house, you get um, su- uh, Suvlakis, you know, on the on the gyro. Oh. You know, cool guy. Oh. Cool, cool. Cool guy does a cool guy does a burrito. Um, <laughs> <laughs> guy from the states does a burrito. I love it. It's a, burrito. it's a very good burrito. Oh, it's that's a very, my boy. very good burrito. That's my boy. And, that's um, awesome. You know, and then you'll have this huge day of, of telling a story. And uh, uh, there's probably been four games that have run 16, 17 hours, starting at eight, finishing midnight, one, two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yep. And uh, they're just wild. There's so many wild games that happen that, you know, th- there was one game, I think cool guy told you about it last time. wasn't there that went to, they revealed, we revealed the ninth objective. So we went up to the <laughs> Imperium uh, Rex. You know, oh, we, no. we, like yeah, one more, one more, one, one more term. We would have been Imperium. Would have been Rex. there. Oh, yeah, man. Um, but you know, it, it flipped out nine control objectives 
and oh in, a God, that, in, in a manner that consistently punishes um, like over, overreach. Yeah. And by the end of the game, there was nothing left on the board. There was no plastic. <laughs> <in here>. <laughs> <laughs> classic, classic oh, TI win, though. God. Every you game know, I've yeah. ever won, it's like the jalopy falling apart across yeah. the finish line. Yeah. 100%. It, I, I think, is it Olo or something? He says that if you win the game and you've got no, no plastic, nothing left on the board, mm. then you've done it properly you've done because it right. you've been yeah. efficient. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. No, would, yeah. Like, I've never owned more than two planets at the end of a win. <laughs> at the end of the game. Mm. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. it's insane. Mm. Just the way it goes. Yeah. Just the way no, it, it goes. Is, it, is, it is great. Do you guys have, you know, a, a pretty big IRL scene where you are or, you know, is it something uh, that you guys do a lot of or... I... So I'm in Kentucky, oh. and he's in Portland, okay. Oregon. Yeah. So we're about two thousand okay. miles apart. Okay, so, yeah. you know. east west coast. Sort yeah, of thing. exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, but I'll let him yeah. go first, then I'll tell you my part. Uh, I am fairly proud of the Portland scene. Uh, there are a couple of different servers. One of them is just like more of like a small, close knit kind of group. And actually, I don't know. They're both like more small and close knit kind of kind of groups in their own way. Uh, not a lot of crosstalk between them necessarily, but I've played games with like both groups of people and it's like, uh-huh. it's great. You know, like we got yeah. like, we, we got some like really cool cats is, is what I'm saying. By the way, really fucking good players. Too. Yeah. Really good players. Yeah. And also people are just yeah. like so chill. You know what I mean? P- people mm-hmm. are just like really chill around here. It's just like good vibes. Um, as far as like competition, like I would say it's like fairly competitive, but you know, never to the point of like, we're just like. You know, pretty much they only stab me, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so not like yeah. my IRL group. Not like yeah, not necessarily. Well, see, see, Brass, Brass, you never mentioned them trying to kill him at his house because he has his own pizza oven for sure. that he uh, hand-built sure. and injured himself exactly. building. Yeah, for sure. So, like, you got to yeah. put that blood and sweat into the food you're making. You can't have Fred That's Meyer it. shit. Yeah, you can't just do Fred <laughs> Meyer, for sure. But, yeah, um, I, I would say, like, I wish we could get more games going on, and I know that they like you know some of the groups they do have more regular like every other week kind of things going on it's more about like me like and my work schedule makes it really tough to Mm. be able to jump in on stuff like that uh so but i want to do more irlti i have learned recently that irlti is my favorite and that's oh, what i want to make more time for in, oh, nothing, in nothing quite like a day with the boys or friends if, you know females yeah. are there but i have yet to play a game of ti like in person with a female actually i don't think about it hmm. but uh anyways uh, this is a lot about the hobby in general but uh mm. uh breast you finished up oh, sorry yeah. i yeah i'm good where i yeah, talk good. a lot um uh yeah so uh, i mostly play with my fraternity brothers actually from college okay. yep. um like i have three different buddies who own a copy of the game and there's probably 15 or 20 of us we have a yearly game that always happens and then about once every three months we'll have a get together for a six or eight player game um it's slowed down since we've kind of frost haven came out and then we played a lot of arkham horror in Mm -hmm. person to be completely honest so uh that ti is kind of taking the back burner and like honestly um I was kicking their ass a lot, so they don't like <laughs> playing as much. There he goes, humble so bragging like, again. Them, pretty much, well, no, d- well, dude, it's just because, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, because I never, like, I know every fucking action card. Like, you know, sure. like compared to them, I'm like a savant. Sure, 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 you know sure, what I mean? sure, sure, like, sure. Yeah, like I just per- I hedge and I listen to Brian too much. Yep. Um, yep. But uh, yeah, so that like that 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 kind of took a backseat, so they don't like, want to play with me. I didn't get invited to the last game, so that felt that felt pretty good actually. To be completely honest, um, yeah. like it really did. I was like, oh, and they even told me like, dude, it's not that we just. I was like, I understand. I won by accident last time. Uh-huh. I was like, I just yeah. want to fill my tech board out. Like, yeah, I'm not joking. I'm not trying to like brag, but like that's that's how it happened. Because like you don't feel like if you're not scoring points, like you don't want them to think you're not taking them seriously. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. but but I told but I told them like. In the fourth round, I'm like, I'm just trying to fill my tech board out. They didn't believe me. Yeah. But, um, but anyways, so, but yeah, we have a pretty robust group and it, it's a good time and it's a fun scene. They're a bunch of fucking assholes though, man. I have every time I have, I have yet to get a support swap. Mm. I like, I have make about three trade deals a game where yep. they're all walking to the other room, hitting the blunt and hanging out <laughs> and talking about something. I don't know what. <laughs> I'm just over here, like, yeah, hey guys, yeah, I ordered the pizza for us. You can Venmo me if you want. 
Wow. Yeah. Uh, what a riot. Um, I, I have to jump in here and say that I'm going to be getting ready to go to work here in just yeah. a second, but I want to turn it back on over to troll and just say like, can you tell us a little more about like your scene, anything you're excited about in particular for the tourney or just any closing thoughts that you have in general? And, uh, oh, yeah. also how they can sign up for it. Let, let oh them yeah. Know let them know too. that for sure. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, look, uh, the easiest way to to get into the um, tournament just join the Aussie Discord. I, uh, I don't know if you guys can put a link in your oh in, sure in, in, yep. your, in your notes or Absolutely. whatever. Uh, join the Aussie Discord. Just once you're in there, just ask ask for the link to the um, to the uh, to the tournament. Uh, it's going to be twentieth and twenty first of May. First day's uh, qualifying game. Second day's final and. Um, and casual pickup games. Uh, we're going to have a dinner on the Friday night for anyone coming in from out of town. So, you know, uh, we'll book that this week. And uh, your tickets are $38 for a couple of days. This hopefully get to 48 We're going to have some really good prizes. You win on the game on the day one. You get a, hopefully you get a, a decent prize, uh, maybe a, a voucher for the store. Um, and, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. We just want this to be the biggest uh, tournament you know this in this southern hemisphere, as a uh, as we like I to say. I love that. Yeah. I love that so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah so incredible be, for the three countries in the southern hemisphere. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we want it to be a big day. We want you know if you if you're new, feel free to you know jump in. We, we you know we just want as many people to be part of this community as we can. If you're in Australia, join Cool Guys Discord. Get in there. Uh, we play. We got our league coming up very shortly, uh, starting on the 30th of May. So that's another oh, thing wow. you can jump in on. And there's a lot more academy games going on, you know. So um, you know, definitely jump in. There's always something going on in in the Aussie Discord. So yeah, yeah, awesome. And thank you guys very much for having me on and um, and you know giving me an opportunity to to plug the the tournament. Of course, oh, hell yeah, man. it was We'd such a pleasure. To, love to have you back, mm. man. Well, it's it's a really good time. Love, yeah, anytime. Love the Aussies. Oh my god, I fucking like, love like the favorite, Aussies, dude. Like literally, have not met one I do not like. like no, exactly. A lot. Like Thank not you. even just a little bit. No, yeah, that's that's my vibe. Like every time I meet one, it's just like you're cool as fuck. How did you get this way? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Want to come over? Can I come never, over? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of things, but I've never been called cool. So, <laughs> yay. <laughs> well, uh, you're like more yeah. than a little cool, my dude. We should grab a beer if I'm ever in, uh, out that way. Yeah, so. take. Take me with you. Sure. Sure to put an, we'll be sure to put the pizza oven on for when you come over. Yes. <laughs> yes. SDF to Melbourne. Yes. yes. <laughs> PDX to Melbourne. Hmm. Yeah. No, for sure. For sure. I, uh, I had had thoughts, uh, and this was like months and months ago when you guys were initially talking about like, we're going to do the Melbourne tourney again. Like I just had this thought of like, I should go like, honestly, like I should go like, <laughs> like what's stopping me? What's stopping me? And then I got this job like and all thousand dollars. Yeah, no, exactly. Probably. Exactly. There's, well, the thing is, it's like $2,000 in flights sucks. Not going to yeah. deny that, but I doubt I'll have to pay for a hotel room. Hey. <laughs> for real. For so real. who's really winning here? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, yeah, cool man. It has been an yeah. absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for being with us, Murderous Troll. And thank you. Yes. Melbourne tournament. Melbourne the tournament. Twenty first and twenty second. Twentieth and twenty first. Twentieth and twenty first. Twenty first. Yeah. yeah. All right. Of May. Check it out. Right. Join the cool guys Discord. Link in the comments. You have Excellent. a great one, man. Take care, man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank have you. a good one. Hey, Root. How's it going, everybody? We're he- Root is here to talk Nomad, to quote our good friend Stads. Uh, Root apparently has quite the foam finger and everything for this guy, but uh, how you doing today, Root? Uh, Frox, I'm doing great. Happy to be here. Oh, man, really appreciate you being on. But um, before we you know, kind of hop into, get to, into everything that we're here to talk about, like, do you want to tell me a little about yourself? Like where you're from, what you do for a living, or uh, you know, really anything, sure. even just a fun story. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sure. I can, I can break down the basics. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm from all over. I currently live in Madison, Wisconsin. Oh, nice. Uh, Jazz hands lives up that way. Yeah, there, you know, there are actually quite a, quite a few folks from the wider community that live here. Oh, that's really cool. Uh, or like, or at least in the area. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so yeah, I, I enjoy Madison a lot, but I've lived all over the place. I've lived in most regions of the U.S., with I think the exception of the Northeast. I haven't really lived in the Northeast. But that's I've like lived... the one spot I haven't visited myself, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So I've kind of lived all over, which is cool. Um, I am currently a uh, an instructor for an online coding boot camp. That is that is my vocation. Mm-hmm. Teacher, and it's mostly fun. Uh, <laughs> being being a teacher, even even when it comes to programming, is not always fun. It can be yeah. stressful and all the jazz. But uh, totally get that. It's like, why is this, this is simple? Why aren't you getting it? I'm just kidding. But <laughs> that's <laughs> seriously that. sometimes. Sometimes no, no that's how I feel at work too. I get that. Yeah, yeah. I got to rein that in sometimes. But man, I mm-hmm. I, I, I frequently feel that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, that's like my biggest weakness. I always tell my coworkers, it's like I could probably teach a master's course. I could not teach young kids basics, like ever. Yeah, no, I'm I'm very uh, lucky to be able to teach uh, adults and people who mostly act like adults rather than mm-hmm. kids or teens or anything like that. Mm-hmm. There was a time at which I uh, wanted to, or at least considered being like a high school history teacher or something like that. But mm-hmm. I don't think I could handle high school kids. Oh my god, I just I don't have the patience for that. No, no for sure, high school kids have to be second worst behind middle school kids. Like middle, like I think back yeah. to middle school, and I'm just like, oh my god. But high school is not too far behind. I feel. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the high school kids are just a little bit older, so they. When when you're in high school, you're old enough to understand you're being a, a, a jerk. When you're in middle school, you're just a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> and you just start to smell bad and like everything else. Yeah. It's even worse. Yeah. No, absolutely. Man, Ruth, that's that's pretty freaking cool actually. But uh how did you get involved in like the uh the community, like the Discord stuff and streaming and everything like that? Yeah. Uh, so that happened long ago in the the early days of SCPT. Mm-hmm. Um, I had I had joined the the big TTS Discord server uh, mm-hmm. back when it was still quite small, and played like a few games there and, and stuff like that, and started meeting people like uh, patients, right, like mm-hmm. magi, people who were in mantis, people who were there at the very very beginning. Um, and I remember. Uh, Matt and Hunter did an episode or or were like uh, doing some research about doing an episode about Tabletop Simulator for the first time because they hadn't really touched it too much at that point. Um, and they were kind of uncertain about whether or not playing online using this tool was going to be a good idea and whether or not things like, uh, I remember a big topic of conversation back then was whether whispers or right, the, the whisper functionality was whether that was like a good thing or a bad thing or whatever whether it slowed games down or you know, things like that. And I remember I made like this huge post about it uh, on Reddit, on like the Reddit thread for for the episode or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so we, from there, we kind of started talking a little bit about, about TTS and I offered to help them make a uh, like tutorial video for people who wanted to get into playing TTS. And so that was the very first thing that I kind of did with the community was help them create that video for... Uh, yeah, new people who wanted to learn how to how to use TTS and how to kind of jump in and play. So that was the very first thing that I did. And then shortly after that, they started up their first tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, and I offered to stream some of those games and record some of those games because I had kind of previously in, in my past done some streaming and, and some commentary of like strategy games and stuff like that that I had enjoyed. So I thought it would be super fun to kind of do that with, with this board game and see where that goes. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, they were like, uh, okay, sure. If you want to stream the games, go for it. Um, yeah. So I started streaming a few of those early uh, tournament games and that seemed to go pretty well. And no, I, I, I've enjoyed your streams. So <laughs> um, yeah. And, and I, I remember back in the early days, I was very gung ho and, and I tried making like uh, highlight real videos of moments from the games and stuff but oh my god that took so much work i i think i dropped that after like four games or something oh yeah man like just editing these videos and like it's just us talking and like you know it's much more succinct i couldn't imagine doing what you're like that for a whole game like i mean it was was not easy Uh, and i i didn't really have video editing experience i was learning stuff on the fly from youtube and and it was mm-hmm. not very good and it was so much work and i was like okay, you know what i'll stream the games but i'm not gonna make extra videos. <laughs> um and and yeah things kind of just took off from there and, and matt and hunter and i um 
talked a whole lot more and, and worked together a whole bunch. And uh, that was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Hey, man, that's that's actually incredible. Uh, it's really fun uh, doing this project because like I've talked to a number of people already and uh, all of them have their own different kind of ways. They ended up in this silly experience. And here we are talking about, well, a fa one singular faction in a game. But for me, it's more about like letting people get to know people. Really, and that's kind of the whole vibe we go for on the show. And uh, I guess we should kind of jump into that. Like, what what really drew you to the Nomad? Why do you like the Nomad so much? Yeah, there are three big things mm -hmm. that 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 draw me to the Nomad and back to the Nomad time and time again. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, the lore. The lore of the Nomad is fascinating. The theme, the whole, the whole package behind who the nomad is and like what their faction represents and and all this <laughs> stuff is super fascinating to me and is absolutely the most interesting story of any of the factions that exist in the game mm -hmm. um it just it i i don't i don't know like i don't i don't necessarily even have a particular affinity for like time travel or anything uh it just for some reason the nomad just super clicks with uh as the sort of character, the sort of faction that I that I want to play, right? The sort of behind the scenes, kind of manipulating things, um, knowing things that they're not supposed to know, influencing uh, people and factions and, and places, kind of behind the scenes. I love that stuff, right? That mm -hmm. absolutely just checks a lot of boxes for me. So right off the bat, before we even talk about how the faction plays or anything, the the nomad is just immediately something that I enjoy interacting. with with the game as just just playing as the nomad is super fun for me yeah um and and after after playing the game so many times after playing so many hours of twilight imperium having a faction that i can really enjoy getting into playing is super important because um, it, it very quickly became easy for me to get bored playing twilight imperium so yeah that was a, a huge fresh uh, a huge breath of fresh air mm -hmm. when they came out so that that's the first thing mm -hmm. that's really important uh, number two, the mechanics of how the Nomad work, the things that they can do, their abilities, all their leaders, all of the stuff, uh, mesh so perfectly with the lore and theme of the character. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. I love the design of the, the faction. I love all of the abilities and, and how well they represent the lore and theme of the faction itself, right? Mm -hmm. The having the multiple uh the multiple leaders the multiple agents who represent like the you know few individuals that the nomad trusts and brought back from the future or whatever with them as his companions or, or their companions right um, having those people be the leaders makes so much sense like that's so cool that that's how that worked out um the the cavalry promissory note being their flagship that appears in a random place across the galaxy where they're not supposed to be because of time travel shenanigans or whatever right that's just awesome yeah. Their future sight ability, right? Being able to invest in, uh, you know, just the right thing in the market so that they, because they can predict the outcome of, you know, how an agenda is going to go. So, of course, they can profit off of that. Yeah. It, it just, it all makes so much sense with the background of, uh, of this faction. And I, I love that. Um, so, there's that. And then on top of all of that, the, the third thing that's great is that as, as cool as all of the abilities are, they're also really good <laughs> <laughs> like when you get down to brass tacks the the faction beyond just being fun to play and and having a cool war and and abilities to mesh with that war and stuff the, the abilities are just generally good right yeah They're, you know a two carrier faction the, one of them is a, a flagship which is just awesome mm -hmm. uh you know starting with a blue tech great a single home planet with four resources and four influence amazing right four commodities incredible uh their their whole set of leaders with like one exception very strong right um just a just a super super powerful like well-rounded mechanical kit uh for the nomad so all of that combines to be a faction that is super super enjoyable for for me to play even when i'm losing <laughs> <laughs> which sort of you know it's pretty common well i mean <laughs> so, you gotta like, think like you're winning 160 or ti games right like that's like the the average at best yeah yeah <laughs> uh uh so being being able to play a faction that i can really enjoy playing even when i'm doing it like atrociously is is super important because i i can stay engaged with the game and i can continue to enjoy the game uh 
Whereas with with other factions, it, it's super easy to kind of just zone out and tune out when I'm you know too far behind. I'm like, okay, well, I can. There's nothing cool I can do. My my whole soul into this game and maybe eke out that one percent win, or I can just like sit back and just let the game happen. Yeah, but with a nomad, you know, in that situation, I can I can still kind of play this uh, sort of mercenary influencer person who is you know selling my agents and my promissory note and and kind of being a mercenary, uh, which I enjoy a lot. No, that's awesome. That's like a fun vibe because like I've only played Nomad, I guess, twice now. Like once kind of in this community game thing, and then I'm in this tournament game for the on the async server. And uh th- they do have a kit, it's kinda of overwhelming. Like you step into that after playing like some of the simpler factions. Um and you have to be real salesy, you know, like no one to talk about the Thundarian, no one you the like, Calvary is a good piece. Like you really kinda of want to preempt that sale and let people know and set the market. Um it's really fun, man. I can see definitely why you like them, why you vibe with them. And I hadn't really thought about like the lore playing into their abilities and making it thematic because you know with Arborek it's pretty simple. Like be plant, plant grows slow, you know. Like that made right. sense, but I didn't really think about like the binding of future sight to like how that's them investing in the markets or the cavalry being the ships there when it's not supposed to be. That's really cool. Man. It, like yeah, oh sorry what yeah, were you about to say yeah, yeah. no just just gonna say I, I think that of of all the factions in TI I think the Nomad really does that the best like of course you know you have things like the Arbrek who can their infantry can like grow other units and stuff which is cool mechanically and does kind of make sense but mm-hmm. uh, a lot of the rest of their kit I, I I don't think any other faction has a kit that meshes quite as well with who the faction is as the mm-hmm. Nomad does mm-hmm. uh, yeah. no I can definitely follow through with that and i can definitely feel that like maybe if i sat down and we had a longer debate but i just i mean i think you're hitting the nail on the head um with what you had just said and uh i guess like my my next point i i was seeing if you could make for me would be what what's like a good tip like what's like a hot tip for nomad like like is it about finding value where you can is it about always like knowing when to do or is this stuff has to come with experience with them like you have to have a feel for the game of ti and the nomad to know when to sell stuff like what what do you think's going on i do think that they uh they are a little bit of a more intermediate faction i think than Mm -hmm. than might immediately be obvious i think that all of their abilities are relatively easy to understand and and generally to use Mm -hmm. but yeah like like you said i do think that it's important to understand the game at a pretty decent level to know when each of these abilities are going to be good Mm -hmm. right to know uh when and how to vote on agendas so that you can make that profit without um you know throwing votes away things like that know when to use your agents when to save them for yourself when you can use them for other people um when and how to trade that promissory note right like trading promissory notes is, is a little bit of a science and uh and figuring out how to get decent value out of the cavalry is definitely a little bit tricky because it's not it's not like one of those promissory notes that gets sold a lot, right? Like research agreement or military support or mm-hmm. the new cybernetics, uh, cybernetic enhancements, right? Those are things that get sold at, at least once a round, right? Just all the time. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's not quite something that happens with the cavalry, despite the fact that the cavalry is maybe the strongest promissory note in the game right yeah being able having a flagship just show up in combat out of the blue is incredibly strong mm-hmm. uh, but paying... it doesn't get sold a whole lot because it's hard yeah. to sell that card right it's really yeah. difficult to to actually find the right time and the right place to sell that and mm-hmm. and get decent value for it no uh, for sure and people like i've done i've held on to it for a whole game when someone sold it to me yeah you know, so you're right. getting that one sell for a dollar and you're like yeah yeah yeah, yeah so it's not figuring like figuring out how to navigate that situation where like you don't really want to give it to someone where they can just hold on to it all the time but you also want to make sure that you actually find uh places to sell it and, and you know part of that is that combat is kind of rare right uh, yeah you know a lot of the, the the meta for a long time in in ti has been I, I think mostly rightly so that combat is something that, that should be a last resort and as a consequence uh, abilities and you know things like the cavalry that have to do specifically with combat don't get used as often as other things like uh you know the research agreement no no absolutely and that's i mean that's an excellent point and i think like it, it's funny because the other person who i kind of talked to about this is an aussie and he talked about like how to play nomad and like it was more about like their combat prowess and the way to go and move about with them and i'm just like 
I don't know how often I'm wanting to do combat as them because they're, to me, in my mind, more of an economic faction, right? And yeah. uh, like, don't get me wrong, like the hero parade and the rampage that you go on, but you, that's, you know, you got to get the gear, gear, the gears chugging before you can do that. Yeah, yeah. I think Twilight Imperium overall really is a, an economic game that, that mm-hmm. allows combat, right? Yes. Um, so Nomad absolutely is a faction that wants to be able to set up to engage in, in cool combats and stuff and, and be in a position where if they need to use their uh, hero to you know, go on a conquest halfway across the galaxy, they want to be able to do that. But in order to do that, you have to have a good economic base. Right? You, want, you have to have been getting value out of um, our Artuno and getting uh, good trades with your four commodities and stuff like that, so you can have a nice economic base from which to launch that you know, series of attacks and stuff like that. No, um, for so sure. I, yeah, I think I think the Nomad absolutely is capable of being a you know a, a, a combat e faction that can that can hold its own, but it is uh, very much a, an economic faction, sort of similar to like Hakan, right? Hakan can engage in combats and be very strong because they can be rich and just build a lot of plastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think Nomad is kind of in a similar way. Well, and I think Nomad has the ability to be just as rich, if not richer than Hakan. And it's not as far a, par- a gulf between the two as people would make out, you know, like sure you're a four com, but I mean, every round you're, you're essentially a five com because you're getting the, you know, at least one Artuno, Buck, which on average you're probably getting more than that if you have any sense of, sense of what's going on. You're going to get at least trade one round, right? Like statistically speaking, and then it's I, don't, I mean, it's honestly the simplest way to play Nomad is just just have Scuttle. Like honestly, you just get Scuttle. Yeah. The game's great. Yeah, and, that, and that's going to be my hot tip is research uh, neural motivators. Yeah. And I know that there are lots of people out there who like don't like research in that tech or don't like action cards in general or relying on action cards. I know stats in particular is not uh, is not a fan of neural motivators. But it, for when I play Nomad, I go for neural motivators uh, maybe even before Gravity Drive. Like I want to be drawing as many action cards as possible because I want to maximize my chance of drawing one of the several action cards that can generate trade goods and yeah. give me insane value on on our tuna right i i absolutely want to dig for that bit of a gambler then uh, is is absolutely yeah a ra- very much a random chance kind of thing but i and i enjoy digging for that i, I really like that part of it um, so i ah. always almost always go for neural motivators i am right there with you man i i go even on like empyrean i'll go for neural like if I can get like a round one tech, I I will go for neural. I mean, like going for aether stream, depending on what's going on. I'm not gonna totally sandbag here, but um, no. If I if I find a way into neural early, I think it's great. Tune two pops out or something like that. Like in my current game with Nomad, though, I did have to go psycho arc uh, because of situations. But we're gonna get too into that. This is your show today. Um, but man, that that's pretty freaking awesome. Do you have like any? cool plays or stories about no that come to mind i know i'm kind of putting you on the spot here uh that didn't I, have to be your play it could be someone else's <laughs> just so you know uh, i well i think i'm gonna just hype my myself up no i i don't know that i have any uh, like nomad moments from other people off the top of my head mm-hmm. or even really that many from my my own play but mm-hmm. there have definitely been a couple of ins- like you know certainly a couple of big scuttles uh for you know 12 <laughs> plus trade goods which always just feels excellent um there uh, there was a game that i played with dane and matt and and a few other uh, like beta testers and stuff mm-hmm. uh, i think after after testing had had been completed and POK was out and everything, I think I don't remember exactly when this game happened, but I think it was after development of POK. Mm-hmm. We all we all got together to play, and I played the Nomad, and I like beat these you know excellent top tier players and like the designer of the game in round four with the Nomad, and that just felt really good. Oh hell yeah! To, to take down that game. Oh uh, man, that's awesome. Yeah, the, I mean you know the stars aligned and, and it was great for me. Well, but uh, that's incredible. Nothing, nothing insane, but it it just felt good. Sure. <laughs> no, I mean, I would. I think I would like honestly, like my wins on factions make me love the faction even more. You know, it's like, oh, this clicked and this all came together. I don't care if the stars align. You got to be lucky to win TI, anyways. So I think no matter what anyone says, like you won the freaking game. You were in a position to take advantage of that luck. You know, um, my personal favorite Nomad story is my buddy was playing them, 
and he gave me the cavalry and I had a Schroeder in an anomaly and someone was going to win the game off Brave the Void and they sent like one thing against it with a couple of fighters and I just played it and it <laughs> <laughs> AFB killed oh, everything man. and then the Memoria popped out and they were just they got quiet when I played the card like they just went oh, you just hear brutal. this <sighs> <laughs> oh, I, I do remember there was one other game where uh... I had an, a, an almost incredible run with the hero. Mm -hmm. the, the the stage two objective that came out was controlling eleven non home planets. Oh man! And I I managed to like save up enough uh, units and enough tokens and everything, and I stalled everybody out. It was just me at the end, mm -hmm. and I was cruising along through the galaxy, just picking up planet after planet. And I got to the last planet, and it was it was like a a, a damaged mech mech against one or two infantry or something and i lost on that last planet it was so close to being like oh. an epic dream win with the the nomad here dude i if you had won that the adulation you would have felt would have been i mean oh. it's so memorable because that's awesome like it almost wins a win in my book a lot of the time because it's like you planned and you had that plan there yeah oh. it was uh it was a great run it was a great one it was, tra it was tragic when it uh, didn't quite work out but it was super fun, it was mm -hmm. super fun. And that's and that's the thing with the nomad for me is that like even when i'm even when i fall short even when i'm not doing well in a game being able to play the nomad is just so much fun that i don't care that much which yeah. i honestly just can't say for for really any of the other factions with like, maybe <laughs> mentac being like second, second. oh oh god don't get me started mentac they are pretty close to my favorite faction nra is right there for me but i it kind of sounds like the big appeal to nomad to you is like you feel like you can make a lot of big brain plays with them and i think that i mean it that's great like how many factions really have that flexibility though you know i, I really can't think of any that do something as unique as um well the the flagship parade ak l sylvan i think i can't i may be uh, butchering the enunciation i'm from kentucky for christ's sakes but <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, no, yeah, no, none of us know how any of this is supposed to be pronounced. It's all, uh, all in Dane's head. <laughs> well, good luck, right? Yeah. But, but Root Man, I really appreciate your time. Um, do you have any like things you want today? Anyone you want to shout out? Like uh, before we uh, have our little send off here. Uh, I'd like to thank my mother and the academy. No. I <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I'm. I'm really. Ex I have no idea what this podcast is that, that you guys are doing, but I'm very excited about it. Uh, and and just hearing about the multiple new kind of community projects that have been happening over the last uh, year or two have been super cool and exciting. Like the new tournaments and the async stuff, and and all the development that's gone into that, and uh, other new community projects like this. Uh, yeah, this podcast series that you're doing is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and I love to see that. And one of one of the things, like when I, you know, when I first started and got into this community, there was there was none of this. Mm -hmm. uh, the, all, all there was was the beginnings of the SCPT podcast, and that was that was it. So to have that kind of have ballooned into a bunch of other um, awesome projects and uh, communities and sub communities and things like that has been super super excellent to watch over the years. So I'm very happy to see all of the new content and and people getting involved and in creating content around TI awesome no that's absolutely incredible well Ruth, thank you for your time it's a sunday morning i know you have like other things to do with your life and uh, i appreciate you appreciate you man and i hope you have a great rest of your day thanks Fox. you as well all right ladies and gentlemen welcome i am here with the one the only tournament champion cute boy with a cute accent and more importantly noted barony stan duke lucum he's here everyone what's up my dog Hey, hey, I'm uh, here to, to, you know, give some love to Barony, because they get a lot of hate these days, so, uh, you know. It's true. It's true. Yes, yes. We are here. It's another uh, edition of our series that we like to call Faction Stands. Faction Stands is fun because, you know, you got the different standums, you got the different camps that all represent the different factions, and people get pretty serious about it. And it's really cool to dive in to uh, these specific ones. So let's just get right into it. Let's get right into it. Yeah. Luke, tell me, where did the love affair start with you? Um, so I'm going to start just by just by putting a fairly large disclaimer on this whole thing. I'm talking purely, I like the barony mechanics. Barony, as like a law faction, they, they suck. They're bad. 
<laughs> but so you know if, if you're in for the law barony maybe not the faction to get behind but mechanically uh, i love them and where it started is um i played them in the semi-finals game of a tournament and won i was like oh this faction's pretty neat mm-hmm. um and then i realized that you know yeah i like barony and then that was back in base game pok happened they didn't get much love i'm sure we'll go into that in quite some depth later but uh the community felt pretty down on Barony, so I, I was, uh, you know, I stepped up. I was like, I'm going to be the one who's going to defend Barony, and I will become <laughs> the Barony man, as it were. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they need someone. That's I'm I'm, t- yeah. I'm telling you that that's going to be like a total refrain for throughout this whole thing is that we're just going to keep exactly. saying like no one really stands up for them, and they need someone. You know. Yeah, they've got cool things they can do. They've they've got you know. They've got more mathematical certainty than other factions in combat, and that is one thing I like about Baron. Oh, you see, that's an interesting way to put it. I, I don't think I would have like put it in exactly that in those terms, but I mean that makes so that makes sense. That absolutely makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, like in the in the in the late game as Barony, when you've got your two mechs on a planet, you know, you're going to win that combat sometimes just based off pure numbers. And that's nice. Totally. Totally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, that's dope. Uh, where, where it started with me, I mean, like I've heard you talk about them just so much and I didn't really have a lot of experience with them necessarily. And then I had an IRL game that I played over at Queso's place, actually his, his apartment Mm. over downtown. Let's see. It was Queso. Kaloon was there. And it was like Queso's friends and stuff. So it was like kind of like a half. It was like a table of like half like experienced players. And then the other half yeah. just kind of like his regular gaming group that they only play TI every once in a while or whatever. But I'm stuck in between Kalu and Queso. And I was like, okay, yeah. I've got my work cut out for me here. And I just like decided to like, we were just doing the draft and I was like, you know what? Barony seems like a pretty solid choice or whatever. I'm not really stoked on the other options. And I instantly was just so, I don't know, just comfortable is, is what I would say. Mm. I was, I was comfortable. It's like, I like the starting tech. I like the yeah. home system a lot. Certainly Ooh, yeah. like they just had these like very comfortable uh, vibes and I was able to just like, go through the game without any kind of like difficulties or obstacles necessarily. And then I got lucky at, in the end game with like two action phase secrets and then was able to nab Imperial in the last round. And then also had gotten my grubby little hands on the minister of war. And then Ooh. it just all came together where it's like I pop Imperial to get to eight and then I do the one action to score the one thing. And then I do, and I think it was like Imperial and then Minister of War. I don't know. It was just like this whole combo. And it was like yeah. oh, over two turns, I just locked it up. And it was so mm-hmm. easy. And then I got to use the hero in this way where it's like, <laughs> I'm going to stay, I'm going to pop the hero. I'm going to stage everything in this one yeah. system that is like the perfect spot to branch out from for my other stuff. I just came away from that game just feeling like I just felt so good about that faction, you know, and I think that is like a good enough experience for me to just now be on this whole train of like standing for this faction, like in general, you know? Mm. So that's, that's where I'm coming, coming, uh, coming into it from necessarily, but yeah. Yeah. So let's let's get into the nitty gritty. What are so when you're playing the faction, like what really stands out to you as far as like these are my strengths, these are like the things that I can like build off of into a grander yeah. strategy. So Barony is to me, they're a faction that has a pretty solid round one. They went from having like one of the best round ones in like before POK, they were like one of the factions, they were one of the only factions that could get two move round one, and that was great for them. And now their round one is like a bit more middle of the pack, because a lot of other factions have like more abilities now, but they still have, they've got six resource home system, which means that you will always be able to do tech round one and get your gravity drive. And not only that, you will also have 
a planet of two resources left over mm. for warfare build, tactic token build, whatever. You've got money, round one. And you also start with, effectively, five tokens in fleet supply, which means that you're never going to have the weird issue of sometimes when warfare pops, like, super early, mm-hmm. you can't build, like, three non-fighter ships off your yeah. warfare build or something, right? Because you've still got, like, a carrier or a dread or a destroyer chilling in the home, so it means that you have to send stuff out super quickly. Mm-hmm. But Baron, you will always be able to, and you actively want to on round one, build five ships at home to just unlock your commander exactly and yeah i'll always that's something i'll always push for is that the easiest time to unlock your commander is round one mm-hmm. because you have enough resources to always do warfare and you can always try and keep that starting destroyer just at home until your warfare build mm-hmm. um yes and so yeah you know, and even you can sometimes like warfare build a couple of destroyers and like a cat like destroy a des- destroy a carrier or something move the carrier out and then tactic token build like the three more ships or something and then get your five that way and then you've got a really big fleet to utilize round two and you've got your commander unlocked and everything like that Mm, yeah but yeah and then the commander is what carries you through kind of the mid game uh i think is that you're trying to look for planet swapping and like friendly trades and stuff that you can do that end up getting one or more of your ships sustained just so you get like an extra extra Mm. buck on the side Mm -hmm, mm-hmm mm-hmm and yeah. then that's that's also really when you're looking for your like red text come in. So you're looking yeah. definitely to get your your real superpower, your late game combo of uh, NES non Euclidean shielding and uranium armor, and mm-hmm. then what's going to be closing you out games. Oh, totally, totally. I, I I wanted to bring up the point with Armada, like the fact that you have these yeah. extra fleet supply. Uh, tokens that are just like floating and non-existing i mean yeah i feel like it's such an underrated ability and where it really comes in for me is i feel like their round two is way more solid like the because there's yeah. so there's so many factions where it's like i'm gonna go hard on this round one i'm gonna have like this whole explosive like gonna do this that and the other thing But then I've like already ran out of gas. I have like no tokens in round two. And then I feel like that's Mm. where the game gets really made or broken for some factions is like if they can actually keep up the momentum in round two. And with Barony, it's like you could even go down to zero in fleet for, for your second round or whatever. And then you've got this extra juice of these tokens that you can just like use for whatever else. And then it's like, I I never worry about taking out a fleet because it's like, I'll just put more in there later, you know? Yeah, the the issue about that is Barony don't really have, they've got no influence at home. Well, they've got one influence at home, but Mm -hmm. you don't want to spend it as influence. And then they don't have any way really, apart from the occasional trade good from the commander of like generating influence. Yeah. So as Bar- Barony is one of the token poorer factions, you're not going to be doing politics secondary as Barony, I think. Yeah, no. So totally. you do have to be a little bit careful, but agreed that in round two, you can definitely go down to like three. I'd say just leave like one token in fleet and have three fleet supply, um, and that should be fine. Unless, like, actually this is another common thing, just thinking of it. If you've, if you've unlocked your commander round one and you've got five ships in your home system, you don't want to take out fleet. But exactly. You can, like, take one out and then lose, like, one destroyer, and that might be worth doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think I've done that quite a lot. Yeah. But you don't want to... Yeah, you don't want to lose all your ships. Totally, so. totally. No, for sure, for sure, for sure. But I feel like Armada is uh, just underrated in that way. It's, like, a very subtle ability, and it... Uh, I don't know. It just works out... Here's the other point that I wanted to make coming into this whole thing is that I realized that I like Barony for the same reasons that I like playing Soul. You know, they are Mm -hmm. a straightforward kind of faction. You know what you're going to get. And more importantly, it's like what they're good at are these fundamental bread and butter aspects of TI. When you're playing Soul, you're like, I'm just may as well just be playing vanilla TI, but it's like I'm better at those fundamentals than any other faction. And Barony is the same kind of way, but it's like they just focus on different aspects of that. So like yeah. for example, like the idea of having these support ships around. You you can like you can fit more cruisers and destroyers into your kit 
than other people. And you just don't even have to think about like, oh, can I even like support all these? It's like, yeah, you can. And I just like, I don't know. I just really like him for that reason. Yeah, I think that's a pretty cool comparison because to me, Sol is like the carrier's infantry faction and the barony is like the dreads mechs faction so they're mm-hmm. kind of like they're both very just basic they've got solid abilities that will always be useful but for the different like mm. styles of units like fleet compositions oh yeah oh yeah totally totally uh i wanted to get into yeah so you had mentioned like this is when your red techs really start to do work for you i don't really get to research those too much. I kind of, I don't know. I played Barony in a different way where it's, I actually lean more toward like carrier to uh, destroyer to fighter swarm kind of thing. Okay. But if I, but if I do dip into red text, I feel like rather than getting like the combo of both NES and Duranium, like I feel like I would be happy just to have NES. I feel like that's a good enough tech, like all on its own. What, what what do you think about that? Or do you feel like the combo is like really, really, really necessary? It, it really depends game to day, game to game. I'll definitely say non-Euclidean you should be getting before Geranium always because I agree. Geranium I agree. takes two rounds to like start being useful in a combat, whereas mm-hmm. the first round is the most important. And just sustaining four dreads and canceling eight hits in like the first round of combat is usually just going to win you. Yeah. whatever fight you're taking yeah totally <laughs> unless it's like a really bad fight that you shouldn't be taking <laughs> in which case you know like that, there's you've got bigger problems then <laughs> yes but yes i i think the issue is that with barony it's you want all of the blue, well every faction wants all of the blue text right mm-hmm. and barony is no exception to that but you also want all of the red text so it really comes to the point where you've got to say do i take fleet logistics or light wave here or do i take non-euclidean and geranium Mm. and that's kind of where there's a big decision point where you've got to really see how your win or like how your late game is going to pan out yeah um so and it's like if you realize you need to probably take your neighbor's home system then maybe light wave is more useful because it's going to get you there yeah but then if you if you think that your win is coming from take mechatol pop imperial or something then maybe you don't need light wave because you there's no one blocking your path to mechatol and you can just go there yeah totally so, totally totally then, so yeah they have a really uh really couple of, and then also as you said there's carriers fighters barony which is kind of a whole different beast with the double docked home system that gives you production 10 yes kind of nuts yes uh, yeah woo, <laughs> fighter 2 I love which it. is yeah fighter 2 is a pretty good unit it's just the the issue for me is that by going fighter two on barony and carrier two you're not really using your commander or your agent or your mechs yeah. or your faction tech <laughs> so you're kind of really cutting down on like which parts of the barony kit you're actually utilizing totally totally yeah so if you can lean into the dreads and that power i think there are there are more rewards if you can do that but mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. they also do have the just the really solid fallback plan of spam fighters spam infantry spam carriers which just works yeah totally totally it's just good ti <laughs> it's just that's what i'm saying it's just good ti and i feel so much more comfortable like you know getting on in my age and getting on in my ti <laughs> career of like having played this game for so long I find myself just so much more comfortable playing those factions where it's like, I just know what I'm doing on a basic level. I'm just playing the fundamentals and I'm just going and nabbing those points, like in whatever basic way that I need. I like all these new factions, you know, like the POK factions are cool enough and everything, but there's like, there gets to a point where they're just like a little too a little too weird or they're just like trying Look, to trying to do too too much like crazy stuff and i just like eh, nah eh, there's don't. a lot going on they're all playing their own little mini games you've got like titans with their mini game and yeah. empyrean with the game and nazrica with their mini game and you're just there like hey i'm just yeah. gonna build some build some dreads and take some planets yeah barony exactly exactly i love it i love it um i i gotta mention can't can't say uh, you know, have this whole conversation without saying that the Ark Secundus is the sexiest flagship. I say it over and over and over again. Is it just the best flagship in the game or is it just the best flagship in the game or what? It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) It's one of those. So 
In base game, I would act like everyone had the direct hit all the time. Mm -hmm. In POK, I feel like everyone is rich enough that eight resources for a flagship that dies, you can rebuild that. Oh, so sure. I'm sustaining art secundus every single round. It's, oh, yeah. it's, it's rotating. It's like a kebab or something. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'll try spinning. That's a good trick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It actually is just... Because <laughs> saving, that, saving that hit or two hits every single round is... is incredible like yeah. you're not losing fights that you've got that oh totally totally I, I mean that's enough like kind of going back to my whole thing of like oh i might only research nes like and not duranium if i'm bringing arc secundus it's like i don't even need yeah. duranium you know it's, yep. ju it's just like built in yeah and i feel like I'm, yeah it, it would be so good even if it didn't have that part you know like it would still oh, yeah, be a good ship it also like bombards and turns off planetary shields. So you basically get L1 commander tape to your flagship. Yeah. Which is great because yeah. you're a faction that wants to bombard stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And then you start with plasma scoring, you know, like as exactly, if you yeah. needed all this other stuff, you know? Incredible. Incredible. Man. Uh, so, so what do we. Uh, I mean, the leader suite is obviously like leaves a little much to be desired. Here, here's my hot take that I'll say, and, mm. I, and I said this a while ago. Whenever I think, I mean, it was Codex Three when they did the the new extra hero, right? Yeah, yeah. So it was like right after that, and there was that made this big splash, and it's like, oh, it's an, it's not a hero that you purge. How strange. How yeah. weird. And I instantly realized, like, this is just a test case for Omega Barony Hero, where mm -hmm. it's literally just going to be the same way where it just flips and then it's on for the rest of the game. And then you just don't care about your fleet supply. And that's kind of weird yeah. because that that's a little weird because then it's like, okay, now we're just, like, ignoring and invalidating Armada as a faction ability. But also, it's like, whatever. <laughs> it's whatever. Yeah, you just it, become super armada at that point, you know? It's a very strange hero. In my head, the barony hero has always just read um, Chun, stool one turn. Um, yep. So, like, it doesn't really do anything. You can get predictive intelligence, like, use it and then take the tokens out of fleet if you know it's going to be the last round. But also then, you're taking... A yellow tech that you don't want to take because you already want every blue tech and every red tech and yep. all the unit upgrades mm -hmm. um so <laughs> predictive not really happening totally the hero hero omega i think would be would be nice um it would help them maybe stay more competitive in mm -hmm. terms of like faction tier list which i mean being realistic we're barony stands here but <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've, we've seen better days for the barony in, yeah, uh, for in sure. tournament success in terms of <laughs> yeah it used to so, be different it used to be different yeah. man wow no i think it's a i think it's a solid good kit overall i mean like very you just gotta you just gotta bring it back to the home system too and say like Mm -hmm. that production center that you can create is like one of the best that there is and uh, I think the other, I mean, the other unsung thing about them is just that they're so good at ground combats, you know? Like you now, Yeah, nowadays, nowadays. Uh, ground combat, it went from Barony don't really do defensive ground combats to Barony with two mechs in their supply. You can't attack Barony planets that have mm. like two infantry on without ridiculously over committing because those two infantry turn into two mechs and suddenly like you need seven infantry to win that fight if they're any uranium barony mechs yeah yeah that like, at least yeah. i don't know the exact numbers oh, Maybe man. It's, yeah. <laughs> but it goes but, back to what you're saying about like just mathematically you know like you have to like get the numbers to be in this certain way to like actually overcome that and if you don't i mean it's mm. kind of it's kind of like the similar vibe of like if you're fighting against the Sardak mech or whatever, like if you just have yeah. one infantry, then you, that's actually mathematically impossible for you to win that fight. So you got to get yeah. it to, to be, yeah, not that man. I love it. I love it. There's this, uh, there's this great meme and I'm trying to remember. I mean, I can't remember who posted it originally, but it's like, it's so funny. It's like a game of Thrones. Um, maybe you remember this one, but it's a game of Thrones template and it's like 
the first panel is like barony double teching or like barony having tech or something and then the guy's like i'll take two and then right. and then the other one is like barony using munitions reserves and then the guy, it's like the old guy being like can the treasury bear such expense Get <laughs> off munitions reserve munitions reserve is an ability that exists and the main good part about the ability is that everyone forgets it exists until the barony player uses it in round five and yep. wins the game off a combat that's like a 50 50 and then like they spend two trade goods and just turn it way into their favor in, yeah like because if if the combat is big enough if there are 20 fighters in the combat then munitions reserve is priced in and is like really good at that point when there's enough units mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no totally totally it's uh but yeah it's, yeah it, it's not an every fight ability for sure because it is way too expensive yeah to like even with rolling dreadnoughts a dreadnought's <laughs> only hitting 60 percent of the time so if you're re-rolling like one dreadnought you're spending two trade goods to produce 0 0.6 hits which is yeah. not ideal no, that's with no. the agent as well i guess the agent does combo a bit with munitions reserve oh sure the agent is the agent is bad yeah yeah it's it's not the best it's not the best but i mean it is yeah. it is thematic and i'll say that it's, yeah it's very it. thematic yeah yeah it's the same with soul where it's like it exists i guess they do mm -hmm. the thing yeah <laughs> yeah and in soul's case it's funny because in soul's case you're like well the faction's good enough so they don't need to have like a stellar agent or like a stellar commander and it can just be just enough but with barony it's like they could use a little more love they could <laughs> i think the commander's really stellar i think the barony commander is oh. really underrated oh no definitely definitely and uh barony commander's cool because um there's other factions that want it so badly there there yeah. really are i think the number one probably is titans right titans wants oh, yeah. wants yeah. that commander and I, I don't know i'm in a weird spot with titans right now where i feel like you know they're i don't know it's like they're just such a good faction like out the gate and mm. they should be giving up something juicy you know like i'm talking about titans player you have to give terraform to the barony player if you want that alliance or something you know because it's like a situation where the titans player might make more money off of it than the barony player is going to make off of it you know oh yeah they will definitely yeah because <laughs> they, <laughs> they've just got faster their ships can go to more places and they're cheaper and they also have sustained damage so mm -hmm. yeah that'll, mm -hmm. uh, they'll make tons of money absolutely absolutely like i'd want i'd want more than terraform honestly terraform is one resource per round and they're mm -hmm. probably getting more than one resource around off the off the commander yeah that's what i'm screaming give me terraform give me your trade agreement give me two trade goods on top of that like i i, I don't know i don't know but yeah to talk about like munitions reserves though it really is i think i mean i think it's balanced it's well balanced in that way yeah in a really frustrating way almost where it's like we're gonna make you a like low commodity faction so that yeah. you can't use this ability all the time there'll be this like major opportunity cost because you really want to be spending your trade goods as influence maybe because you don't really have a lot of that yeah um but it's like i don't know it just makes sense and it is well balanced but it also is like frustrating because there are these other factions that are just like breaking the game apart in like what they're capable of <laughs> So is it yeah. like really fair to like be so judicious with the with the barony in this way? Oh man. Well, one of the things I actually like about barony, and th this is like a big tangent, but this is one of the things that I really like about barony recently is my two biggest like gripes at the moment with the with the game of TI are Necro and Jolna. I think those two factions are completely unfair <laughs> in what they can do. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and I think Barony actually has good like matchups against both of them, as weird as that sounds. Mm. I think if you're Barony in a game with Jolnar, you are just begging for research agreement because I think Jolnar giving Barony like Dread Two in round two, or like giving them a red tech so they can get to Geranium faster, mm. is like a mistake. I think yeah. Jolnar can 
make Barony win the game ah. um, and not realize they're doing it. A really good example of this is um, his base game. So it's really old, and this is just showing how like old I am. But Ginger's semi final in the 2020 tournament. Uh, there were, so there were two Barony wins that's in the six semifinals. There's my game, game one, and Ginger's game, which I think was game five. And Ginger got research agreement like three times off of Jolnar oh, and just man. had everything. Ugh. And it just really, it really just showed how like a Barony that has the full tech path is just unstoppable and they become a monster completely. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And then against, and then against Necro, um, I think you're, you're, beefy enough and you have enough resources early game that you aren't like easy pickings for them to just tear you apart and take all your tech mm -hmm. you can sell the critical tech to them and i think as well they really want your commander so like once you've given them like grab drive and non-euclidean if they want it then you can just swap support swap alliances or whatever and just be chill with the necro and they'll find someone easier than you to eat yeah and, Really, if you're in a game with Necro, all you could ask for is to just not be eaten. It's true. So. It's true. <laughs> those are those are good points, and uh, I don't know. I think you're really onto something as far as like they're breaking the game. Like, yeah, man. no, I know, I know. Joel Lauren and Necro, not fun. Yeah, yeah. What, what have you done, Dan? What have you done? <laughs> what have you done, my dude? <laughs> Yeah, I was just in this uh, async game with uh, Holy Teaspoon playing Necro, and it was like kind of a funny situation in general because like I'm playing Yasarl, I was having such a trash game, like the in the entire game I was just complaining. I mean, it just became this bit at a point where it was like I'm just Oscar the Grouch living in my trash can. I'm just a little <laughs> trash goblin, is what I am. But it all came together where I could like actually have somewhat of a swing round and it all came down to like me like pooling my stuff in this one system and then playing unexpected action and then branching off and doing all these other action card things and then Spoon saboed my unexpected action and at that point I just threw my hands up like oh man like why did I even get my <laughs> hopes up this is my trash game like yeah and I just kind of like didn't really do anything for the rest of the game but I, but I was sitting and watching him as Necro just, like, completely pop off. And he was doing, like, the wildest possible shit. He was, like, producing so much that he had, like, almost run out all of his reinforcements. You know, like, he never got War Sun tech or whatever, but it's, like, mm. all of his dreads, all of his mechs, all of his cruisers, all of his uh, uh, stroders, are all, it, like, everything's on the board, like, except for his fucking War Suns or whatever. Yeah. And he was just capable of the gnarliest stuff. He, like, took a home system, and he wasn't, he wasn't even confident in his ability to take this home system, and he was begging me to, like, help him use, like, use Sru to copy... Mendoza to give him extra movement to do whatever he was begging me like I can't do it without it and I was just like so blase like uh, I don't know blah 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 whatever and then he like didn't even need my stuff you know like he yeah. just he just went and took this home system anyway so yeah yeah necro like never never underestimate what they got going on <laughs> yeah and i guess looping it back around to barony like you're not gonna be in a situation with barony where you've run out all of your reinforcements it just For doesn't sure. really happen they're not that they're not that guy so no. like what you can expect is i guess you try and build your five dreadnoughts in your flagship or if you're going carriers you build your four carriers and then also hopefully your flagship mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and then you're just kind of having trying to have a few destroyers sitting about destroyer two can be a great tech to get oh um, totally yeah yeah, like, and definitely if two unit upgrades come out, then if you're going for the dreadnought path, then you want dread two destroyer two. If you're going for the carrier path, you'll probably want carrier two fighter two destroyer two as your mm -hmm. third unit mm -hmm. upgrade. Yeah, but uh, just don't build cruisers ever or barony. <laughs> no excuse, absolutely no excuse. Uh, they are not a cruiser two faction. They're no. not even a cruiser one faction. Totally. No, I agree. I agree. I really don't see any reason to. I mean, cruisers, It as I've gotten more into it, I realize that there's so much more of like a specialized thing because it's like, if you're just looking for a non-fighter ship, build a Stroder. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like literally half the price. It comes with this extra little AFB that might might like you know turn the tide for you in the fight there 
uh, you know, it's like it, it's not going to have the capacity. The cruiser's not going to have the capacity into, until you upgrade it or whatever. So it's not bringing that functionality into it. Uh, I the more I play, the more I feel like I'm just going to build destroyers over cruisers, unless I'm this very special faction that has like a special consideration for cruisers or whatever. It's just like a specialized yeah. thing. That's that's all. That's all it is. That's all it is. Yeah, I'm I'm curious what you think about the uh, uh, about the promissory note war funding. Do do you get to sell it very much? Do you? I try. So <laughs> the thing with Barony is that you don't really have trade good income. You're a two commodity faction. Like to get trade goods with your commander, you have to actually be fighting someone. Mm -hmm. And at some tables, that is actually difficult to accomplish a lot of the time. Especially if spend objectives come out and people aren't planet trading, then you need the trade goods to score the spendies, but you don't have any way of really generating money. So you really need someone to be fighting so you can sell war funding or use it yeah yeah it's yeah it's a it's a tricky one because it got uh it got an omega version that made it so that you don't have to spend the money to use it totally so now it's free, which is great um and so that makes it a lot better but it's still kind of a hard sell because you're only ever selling it for like one trade good you mm. can never get a more you can never get more price than than that like it just doesn't happen yeah um yeah and then for that one trade good like could the person that you're selling it to get something better could they get like titan's agent instead which is canceling a hit or could they get like i don't know maybe the best way to sell it is like in a round where if you're not fighting at all you can like sell it with your agent and give them like this little double trouble they get oh to draw the agent. wow so i've done that a couple of times um the other time the time where i always use it is um I did this a fair amount in my prelims game last year that I won on Barony, is I will give it to people for free when I'm planet trading with them, so that if they miss, they can re-roll, score a hit against my Dreadnought, and I make a trade good off the commander. Ah, yes. You can actually use it to try and, yeah, like, and then again, hmm. it's the opposite. If if I roll hits against them, they can re-roll them into miss, like, they can make me re-roll it into a miss. Whoa, right? okay, okay. So, it can work both ways in that you can make the combat worse against you so that you make more trade goods because you sustain more dreadnoughts, which mm -hmm. is really strange. But yes, like, yes, yes. Hey, you got to work for your trade goods on Barony. you got to do some gymnastics, I guess. you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. I mean, this this just made me realize that um, Barony is a faction that really fucking hates the Mentak, right? Right? really yeah. fucking hates mentak huh <laughs> well if mentak's in the game you've just gotta if mentak's in the game then munitions reserve suddenly becomes every time you have two trade goods in a combat you may yep. as well spend them on munitions reserve because it, that third it, one that you'd get from sustaining is just going straight to mentak yeah totally totally <laughs> Yeah, I, I always keep coming back to this joke of like, oh, well, if Mentak's in the game, then it's easy. Like, all you need to do is just eliminate Mentak. That's... <laughs> yeah, that's also an option. <laughs> I, I've got this long, long-running joke with it because uh, Frox is a huge Mentak stan, and then I always talk shit about it, always talk about like, ah, Pillage is such a pain in the ass, like, ah, I hate it, blah, 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 blah. And then in my prelims game, I... um had this whole deal with the Mentak where it's like they they allowed me to do this trade. I'm playing Mahawked. I got my uh, commodities off my Crimson Legionnaires or whatever. And then they were just like, oh, I'll just like wash those for you. And it was like literally the most crucial moment where it's like, oh, this is going to allow me to score. And then I said, I will never talk shit about the Mentak ever again. Uh, never, ever. But here I am fucking back on my bullshit. Hey back on my bullshit i mean but come on man it's like Bre breaking and non-binding oh yeah dude no it, here he goes again but, yeah. dude i mean but it's too real i mean like pillage i mean dane admitted it was a mistake right did, it, did he <laughs> did he okay uh yeah citation knows. needed <laughs> yeah, exactly. a big a big asterisk on that one <laughs> but no mentak's one of the factions i like playing mentak but i hate playing against mentak and exactly. i think that's just like the thing about barony is 
I can stand them even when I'm not playing the barony. When yeah. there's a barony in the game with me, I want the barony to do well. I want them to have a good time. Yeah. When there's a mentak in the game with me, I want them to get eliminated. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, totally, totally. I mean, barony, like, and, you know, bringing it back again to, like, the mechanics versus the lore thing, like, we're not, like, really standing for their lore and the fact that yeah. they're the, they are these brutal imperialists or whatever, like... Not standing that, but I mean, as far as like the power rankings of all these factions in this game, like they're, you know, one of the underdogs. They're one of the underdogs. They're one of the middle of the pack ones that you want to, that you want to raise. Yeah. Up. Yeah. And, and like, I don't know too much about the law, but so a big citation needed. Maybe one of the law heads can like correct me on this, but like they kind of started it, right? Uh, like the whole thing in them and soul yeah. they, them and soul were like kind of just like let's just go for it and now there are like 20 factions that could absolutely paste barony so uh yeah. i'm lucky <laughs> 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 they really bit off more than they could chew in the whole like twilight bit. wars thing yeah yeah a little bit more than they can chew um uh this just popped into my head so uh barony always gets lumped in with uh with l1 right where it's yeah. like when you're talking mm -hmm. about one you're kind of also talking about how they're similar to this other one or whatever but like we can agree that barony's better than l1 right we can agree on that, right? From, from what perspective, like, yeah. gameplay, I think <laughs> they're more viable in a tournament setting than L1 slightly. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'd agree with that. For I sure. think I'll take Barony over L1. Um, yeah. L1 just, of course, just set back by that horrifically bad tech path. Yeah. yeah. It's just miserable. And Barony, just you start with the text in the colors that you want. And exactly. that's enough. Exactly. I mean, that is really what does it for me. I mean, like, obviously, they're similar flavors with, like, um, you know, just like their focus on dreads and their, like, chonky production center at home yeah. and all of that. So they got they got similar flavors. But for me, it comes down to the tech path and it comes down to, I don't, I don't know, it's like I feel like there's they have a little more versatility than L1 with some of their abilities and then the really cool thing about l1 is like oh i just ignore planetary shield but then barony's like i just built arc secundus man like i mm. you know and i only really need that power in one system at a time anyways so like why do i need this whole commander that's all about it necessarily yeah l1's l1's in like so L1 has a much worse start. They scale a bit better, like, aggressively into the late game because their hero can be really useful and, like, you can't really stop Harrow from taking planets. Mm -hmm. But offensively, L1 have no tools, whereas Barony still have, like, the mechs to defend the ground. And yeah. that can be really, really strong. Totally. So I think Barony is a little bit more, like, balanced in terms of attacking and defending, whereas L1 is, like... They're an attacking faction. You can take any planet you want, but you can't hold planets very well. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's hmm. yeah. That's an interesting way to put it for sure. Which would be which would be like great if L one was also great at like stalling into the later bit of a round, so there's no possibility yeah. of a counterattack. But they also have the zero influence home system. You know. So. Yeah, they just can't do that. So yeah. <laughs> <sighs> it's too funny, man. It's too funny. Man, is there any other parts of the kit that we didn't talk about? Or are there, like, or maybe there's, like, non-standard things to do with Barony that, that you want to talk about? So, something that's... I, I don't know how well-known this is, but this used to be a bit of, like, a meme back in the day. So, uh, before POK, there was a Barony strat called the Cheesy Bread strat. Here we go. I don't know if you've heard of this. Yeah, the Cheesy Bread. We were just um, talking made, about it the other day. My, by, my homies and I. By Imsen. So the, the plan is, the plan is, you take tech round one and you double tech for gravity drive and fleet logistics. And then you complete your expansion round one as normal. And then yeah. round two, you take Diplo, because no one else is taking Diplo round two. It's a very weird pick. And then on the two, you immediately just destroy your neighbor's best system. <laughs> And then immediately with fleet logistics, diplomacy on it so they can't take it back. And you can refresh the planets that you've taken. And because uh, no one else has had a chance to act except the leadership player, no one else can refresh any planets. As to the mileage that this actually gets in terms of like winning games, 
usually starting a war on round two is not the way to go. <laughs> but it's really fun to do. So Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I love it. I love it. I'm trying to remember the exact situation. Who did it? Like, and someone did it with like master plan or whatever, and they said, like, yeah. I just did a cheesy bread or something. Yeah, like, yeah. And, and, yeah, that that was really funny. But I I mean, I'm a huge fan of it, like I guess I'm a huge fan of starting a war in round two. That's one of my failings, one of my failings. <laughs> but also I'm a huge fan of using diplomacy offensively like that, you know, mm. like it's like so it's such a weird strategy card in, in that way where people like ignore it or they only think of it in terms of like defensive capability or like oh uh, maybe i don't even need to worry about defending this system or that system but it's like also this offensive thing and then like you kind i don't know you kind of have to combo it with fleet logistics if you are yeah. going to do that kind of thing but it's cool too where you can you can math it out you can figure it out where it's like i only need to take enough to take the system i don't need to like over commit and then have all this stuff to guarantee that i hold on to the system for the rest of the round or whatever like that's what the diplomacy is going to do and then yeah. it's an economy tech where it's like i'm taking stuff and i'm immediately making it available for for my own thing so yeah i think there's a lot to be said for the strategy in general and here's the other thing that you don't talk about enough with diplomacy is the fact that it's a low number i really spend a lot of time like thinking about like okay what's the strategy card that i want in terms of like what it can help me do in the round versus where am i going to be in the initiative order and especially if we're talking about dunking on my left neighbor then someone's already taken leadership and then mm -hmm. i have no problem with taking diplo because that ensures that i go before my left neighbor no matter what they take and it's like if i wanted if i actually wanted to take tech or trade or like whatever it is that i actually wanted to take like whatever i'll figure it out you know like what's more important is being able to get this preemptive strike on my left neighbor and then being able to like also secure it with diplo like i don't know i've done it mm. plenty of times just ask jazz x hands he'll tell you that yeah. i've done it a couple of times and he hates it <laughs> yeah and the, the other cool thing going for like this strategy if you want to go the early war route with barony is that your starting dreadnought is like really useful dreadnought in round one is like when someone has just sent like a carrier a fighter and two infantry to their next door system to pick it up you can send in a dread and like dread and an infantry and a destroyer and you win that combat and take one of those planets like with just those units and that's like 99 percent or something because you have plasma scoring for the bombard yep. so there's like a very high chance that there's not even going to be a ground combat there'll just mm -hmm. be no infantry there and you can also just sustain in round two usually because your opponent will only have like one action card in hand and kind of like if they have a direct hit you kind of well unlucky yeah yeah Meg, <laughs> it's, mega yeah it's not gonna happen they're not gonna have the direct hit you exactly never never play around ha your opponent having one exact direct hit in the hand of one card totally totally it's it's a gamble that's definitely worth taking yeah 100 percent um yeah i guess the only thing that i wanted to to leave off on um is uh i just wanted to talk, talk about ai development algorithm and it's it's become one of my favorite just like workhorse techs that I just work, put into like all sorts of different tech paths. But I feel like for Barony, it can be so important because it's like, it just opens up so much stuff for you. It just opens up. I mean, obviously it's the way that you're getting dread too, like by on, on your own with like ha not having to worry about like, oh, I found a yellow skip or whatever. Mm. It, uh, it opens up fighter too. Uh, and then like, I like to do destroyer two a lot, which is funny because then, I mean, it still works out because it's like you tech destroyer two while you have it. And then you don't yeah. have to exhaust it for the skip. You just get the rebate on the, the money, like immediately, you know? And mm. I don't know, like, it's just great. And, th and then you get carrier two, like if you get carrier two, then it's like you already had gravity drive. So then that yeah. immediately just feeds into the rebate that you get. 
So I don't know. I just think AI dev so great for Barony. So so oh, great. See, I'm actually not as hot on AI dev for Barony. Oh um, really? If oh. you if you ha- if you don't have a yellow skip, then yeah, you're getting AI dev because it gets you dread too, and mm-hmm. it's way better than taking Sarween or Scanlink. You just don't want those texts for sure. Barony. But I think if you have a yellow skip, you should be using the yellow skip to get Dread 2, and you should not be getting AI dev. You should be getting self-assembly routines oh. instead. And I know that's really controversial, but... No, dude, I love it. I love Def, it. Def Piper sold me on this. Because wow. your self-assembly routines means that every time you sustain a mech, you get a trade good. Every time you lose a mech, you get a trade good. Mm. So mechs are just self-refunding. It turns every single infantry into a mech because it costs two to deploy it. Yeah. And then it gains you two trade goods as it gets sustained and then dies. Wow. Yeah. So self assembly routines, I think, is a big sleep attack on Barony. Um, oh, wow. Just like, yeah, because it just makes every single infantry of yours on the entire board a mech. Oh, that is hot. <laughs> yeah. That is so hot. But of course, of course, if you're doing that, you're missing out on the you can't as easily get fighter two. So you've kind of got to give up on that. And sure. you're not getting as many resources because you're not going to have as many unit upgrades. But the counterpoint to that is you've got a six resource home system. Usually resources are not the problem on Barony. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's the part that really does feel win more where it's like, I'm exhausting AI dev for three resources. And it's like, okay, well now I actually have to get creative with my build to like maximize the, <laughs> the how many resources yeah. that I'm spending here, you know? Yeah. It, it is like that. Once you've got all five dreads out, you're like, well, I've got five resources to spend on a build, but I, only want to make fighters and <laughs> infantry, so uh, I guess I'll just waste some of that. Uh, man, I am so glad you brought up that self-assembly routines thing, though. That's a uh, yeah, classic, classic uh, galaxy brain deft strat right there. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, and anyone listening to this, if you've uh, if you're playing a barony game like and you've got a yellow skip, try it out and like let us know how it goes. I guess because uh, no. it's. Uh, it's a forbidden technology, you know. No one, no, no one gets self-assembly routines. It just doesn't happen. And I think there's, for Barony more than anyone else, there is value there. Totally, totally. Well, I, I think I'm going to start researching it just for fun, just, just to make, just to make myself feel good is what I'm going to do. Hell yeah! It man. does. It does. However, this is just a, another warning attached to self-assembly. It leads to some weird plays where mm-hmm. you'll put the mech down from self-assembly for free on your like warfare build or something and then you'll send the mech out and you'll intentionally like assign the hits to the mechs before your infantry because you want them to die so you can have mechs in the supply because they only have the deployability while they're in supply so you need to really be careful of that um and so it turns it into like you actively kind of want your mechs to die before infantry which Mm. means that you want to take slightly more risks in combat but obviously don't throw the combat just to lose a mech Mm -hmm. make Mm -hmm. sure you're still winning the combat exactly then start losing your mechs yeah you just got you just got to do it like more carefully and methodically but if you're doing it in that way then you're like absolutely maximizing that whole like I just have an infinite supply of these essentially like yeah. just, but it has to be a one at a time. Like one pops up, then it dies, then yeah. it pops up again, then it dies. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. So fascinating. Well, Luke, we rambled on and on and what an amazing <laughs> fun time it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolute blast to have you on. Would, you know, like, honestly, Frox and I are just looking for episode ideas all the time. So if you got something that you're passionate about that, you know, that you want to bring to the table, like, come on back anytime. Yo. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll try to have a think, see if there's anything I want to go on a rant about. (laughs) (laughs) Anytime, my bro. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Great great being here. Have fun chatting. Of course. What a blast. Faction stands. Here we go. What a fun time. And we'll see you next time. Thank y'all. Thank y'all very much. Now, let's chill with Jadim Jedi. Finally, I get to sign off a whole episode all by myself. And I'm going to teach something relevant. Something modern. Blue Tech. Propulsion Tech is really, really great. For Scorn. Got a fast ship so I don't have to wait for scorn. There's-
there's always gravity drive for scorn. I fleet log day and night for scorn. And I can deflect at the speed of light for scorn. Propulsion tech is for scorn. Propulsion tech is for scorn. Why do you think blue tech is great? Scorn, scorn, scorn. JJ, what are you doing? Hello, Frogbird Monster. You are ruining my song. Oh, me sorry. You know me too. Well, if you wouldn't mind, please being quiet for a minute so I can finish. Okie dokie. Good. I'm glad we have transit technology. Four score. Ooh. Which gives us untold troop mobility. Four scorn. Right from your own space stock fort. You can build units and drop. And again with bio stems to unexhaust. Four scorn. JJ. Propulsion tech is four scorn. Propulsion tech is four scorn. Spend all game filling my tech board. Four scorn. 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 That's gross. You're a blue tech nerd. Aw, oh, sticks and stones, frog bird. No, oh, really. You're a blue tech nerd. Normal people don't research blue tech all game and score. Oh? What? You have no idea. Ready, normal people? Ready. 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 Let me hear it. Propulsion tech is for scorn. Sorry, Frogbird. Propulsion tech is for scorn. Blue tech's great. All these guys get gravity drive for scorn, scorn, scorn. These techs are not just for scoring. Hold on a second. What? Now, I happen to know that you, Mentech, like yellow tech for salvage ops and mirror computing. That's correct. And Kellerez, you keep taking yellow techs for IAHQ and ASN? Sure. And Barony, you like red text for NES and Duranium? Yes, I do. And Yasaro, you like green text for Mageon? True. Hmm, but Frogbird, what do you think they tech after? Hmm? Yeah. Ew! Propulsion tech is for scorn. Propulsion tech is for scorn. Grab the seven and double tech for scorn. Scorn, scorn. Scorn! Scorn! Propulsion tech is for propulsion tech is for propulsion tech is for scorn!